have any questions that you'd like us to answer on the next BuzzFeed Unsolved postmortem, send them to these things here. Spooky ghost. Watch the episode first, and then uh, <laughs> Frankenstein. And then send those questions. And all right, we're leaving. Wolfman. Spooky ghost. Nope. No Just ghosts. Something. No, I'm not. I'll give you one ghost. I'll give you one. One ghost. ghost. Here we go. One will trickle by right now. All right. Now. Oh, spooky ghost. <laughs> no, no, spooky ghost. That's all you got. Well, what, what else do you? I don't know. You have other goons you have in your little troop. Okay, I want uh, an exploding old lady then. You want an exploding? I want an exploding old lady. Are you gonna hold her in your hand? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> oh. We're gonna do it like one of those things they do at theme parks. Look yeah. at your hand. Hope she's okay. Oh, oh, oh shit. shit! I did have an Instagram comment from August Wallflower, and they said. Since in the last Q&A you were gone, Ryan made sure that there were no, quote, dumb animations. Is that what you called them? Yeah, I think I called them dumb animations. Okay. I, I stand by I was that. wondering if you could do double or even triple the animations across the screen this week for us Shaniacs. Ah. So what about Yankee Jim on a speedboat? Okay, wait a second. That's way Okay, too we got Yankee Jim on a speedboat. We got CC Tinsley on a Segway, maybe? Sure. And then, uh... You don't have any idea how long that's gonna take. You got it, you got it. And then Bigfoot on a... You know, big wheels. So it's gonna be like a race, almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Whoa! I got my money on foot. I'm rooting for Cece. It's Cece! Sounds like a race for Cece Tins. And since this is the grand finale of the season, we're going to put some nice animations in here. Let's um, keep it simple, huh? It'll just be you and me popping up and then um, the devil in between us, uh, our best friend, and a little rainbow behind us all. Here comes Axeman Santa, here he goes, whoa! At least what? you had the courtesy of sighting a creature we already created. That's so true, what a jolly him. guy. I mean, super dumb. Was that crash him crashing into the wall? I heard a crash from the right side. And since this episode was very sad, we're just gonna have a hot dog on a skateboard going by. Whoa. Is that guy cool or what? I guess. Was he wearing a cowboy hat? I didn't see. I, I think would, he was. I wasn't looking down. I think he was. Okay. And because of the rave response to our, our most recent animated character, we're gonna bring back the hot dog with his lovely wife. Here they come. Wow. They look like a happy couple. Yeah. Really happy couple. Good stuff, you done? Here comes our hot dog pals again. They must have taken the wrong turn. Yeah, here they come back. Yes, yeah. she's, she's, she's not happy with his driving. I'll oh, man. <laughs> yeah, wow, wow, wow. We're, this is really good terms you got here. Everybody loves these people. If yeah. you want these hot dog people on a t-shirt. <laughs> oh my God, they just got a flat. Oh, oh they shit. spun out. Their car exploded. Holy shit. Mr. Hot Dog is crawling out. Oh, he's on fire. He looks like he's hurting. He's screaming. She just walked out of the car. Oh my God, she has a pistol. She just shot him in the head. No, this shit. was a setup. She got back into the driver's seat. She's driving away. She's this speeding is... past. Oh god! Oh my god! What a horrible occurrence that just happened. What the fuck? He's still alive. He's, He's still crawling alive. away. Oh my god! Incredible. Well, I guess we'll find out what happens next week. This is. Uh, 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 but for now, the case remains. This is a developing soap opera. Bun solved. Oh my god. <laughs> And yep, you, you do your stupid animations. I'm and here just goes giving up at this point. The hot dog, Mrs. Hot Dog, she's living it up without her husband flying right by on a pickle boat. Oh wait, she doesn't know he's alive. She still. doesn't know he's alive. He's gonna come back yeah. like Michael look at, Myers. Look at how happy she is. She doesn't know. I hate that I actually am invested in this story. Yeah, it's now. pretty rich and compelling. It's fucking stupid. It's like blood simple for hot dogs. For hot dogs. Now let's take another visit into the hot dog saga. Here he comes. He is going after his wife and he's being carried by a seagull across the ocean to chase her on her pickle boat. Isn't that weird? Wait, what the f- Wait, well, Cole, there's so much new information you just yeah, put in there. next week, the thrilling conclusion of the hot dog quadrilogy. That's not a thing. Yeah, it is, quadrilogy. That's no, not. People say that. No one says that. And I'm sure we're gonna hear something stupid, so. Well, you know, Miss Hot Dog, she's still cruising by on her pickle boat, and it looks like her husband is still being carried along by a seagull chasing after her, but what? I feel like there's another figure. I can't really make out what it is, but it went by real quick. It's as if someone's following them. Titillating. No. Yeah. No. I think so. No. 
I guess we'll wait and find out what happens. I mean, I'm gonna have to because I'm sitting here. I'm forced to hear it. But if I had the option, I would opt out. Too bad. Okay. Oh, and as he charges up, he's... Uh oh, he, the the big the final meeting. He's he's reached her. Here comes. She's on a desert island. Uh oh. She's made her escape to a desert island. Didn't see this one coming. But here comes the hot dog guy. That seagull is dropping him from the sky. Oh. Oh, he's dropping an air assault. And he says, Rebecca. Rebecca. Dan, why did you run from me? I, I didn't know how to tell you, but we have a son now. Why did she shoot him in the... I don't know. <laughs> this is Brandon. Wait, I'm so confused. Hello, Brandon. Was... I'm your father, Dan. Why did you try to sh shoot me and leave me for dead? That wasn't me, Dan. It was me. <gasps> Who's that? It's me, Pam, your evil twin sister. Her, Rebecca's evil twin sister? And she's on a crab! I won't have you two together. You know I love Dan. And now it's time to die. Mount your crab. Brandon, step aside! Oh shit! This is gonna be a crab joust. This is a crab joust. Presented in some pretty rudimentary animation. Oh god, here comes the charge. Oh no! Next time on BuzzFeed and Saw Postmortem. It's not over! <laughs> I could see him winding up over here to send us a new big old ball of shit. Okay, so. here we go. As we last left off, do you remember where we were? I do. Okay, great. We were in the middle of the crab joust. Okay. This is the moment, the final showdown. The crabs, frothing at the mouth, speed at each other, rage in their eyes. Pam on one, Dan on the other. Suddenly, we flash to white. Wait a second. What? Wait. <laughs> Wait. Wait, what? <laughs> Just bear with me. The year 1978. The place, Studio 54. Two sexy hot dogs catch each other's eyes across the crowded room, and they like what they see. They didn't come here looking for love, but maybe they've found it. Who are you? I am Dan, a hot dog. I am Rebecca. Nice to meet you. I love you. I love you too. This is some great dialogue in this Sorkin esque. Promise you'll never shoot me, Rebecca. I promise, Dan. <laughs> I promise I you'll never shoot me. I can't say the same for that my- That wasn't funny. I can't say the same for my evil twin. What's that? N nothing Let's cover ourselves in mustard and get crazy. Good. I wait, wait, that wait, was wait. The origin story, I can't believe it. So what happened? Are we gonna see the end of the joust? It's never gonna end, Ryan. That's, that's it is gonna end, we'll get there. I just, you know, you gotta draw it out. I was ready to end it last week, and then you made it a cliffhanger, so you know what? I got sucked up into the vortex, I'll admit that, and it was the biggest mistake I've ever made. Yeah, but now everyone's more invested because we know how these two rich, wonderful, beloved characters met. Do your worst. Crab joust. It's happening for real this time. Until flash to white. The year, 1985. The place, Rochester, New York. Two slender, sexy hot dogs are bathed in the glow of a stained glass window. Behind them, Sausage Priest. Do you two rich, beloved characters vow to love each other, to hold each other and whatever the rest of this wedding speech is? Rebecca, you are the most beautiful hot dog I've ever seen. I hope you never get eaten on the 4th of July like my parents. I will love you forever. I do. Dan. Your words are making me happy, so I am smiling. I love you, and I hope you don't get murdered by my evil sister. What? Uh, nothing. I do. Very well. I here do thereby, as the sausage priest, another layered, universally adored character. <laughs> Pronounce the husband and wife for better or for worst. Fun. W-U-R-S-T. Mm. That's good. So how many times are you gonna flash back before you actually show us what happens in the crab joust? We're, get, we're getting there. I was ready to end it, man. Sorry to disappoint you. That's it for this. Crab joust coming, don't, don't worry. It's not gonna come, it's never gonna come. Hashtag crab joust. Don't hashtag that. Please do. Don't. That'll be a good hashtag. That'll be trending. It's not gonna trend. Yeah, worldwide. Dude, do not, do not don't, don't do that. Leave. We got that crap okay. content you're looking for. Um, as we last left off, Dan, a very relatable hot dog, was on a crab hurtling toward his wife's twin sister, the evil but very nuanced Pam, 
his wife Rebecca, and son, Sweet Brandon. Spectate in horror. The crabs are on a collision course now. There is no stopping this. Flash to white. Two young crabs sit on a beach somewhere in the South Pacific. They are siblings. Between them, their father, with the most beautiful beard a crab has ever had, and a hat that maybe looks like a wizard's hat, or whatever is easiest to animate. This, so far, is maybe the richest character yet. My children, my gentle children, Murray and Gina. Yes, Papa. Yes, my Papa. Always love each other, no matter where your paths take you. There is enough darkness in the world, and we crabs are the keepers of the light. We have been since the beginning of time. But we love each other, Papa. How long is this thing? Yes, y yes, Murray and I, wait. But we love each other, Papa. Yes, Murray and I are siblings, but also best friends. Why would we ever fight? I have seen it in my special dreams. A hot dog may hypnotize you. How could a hot dog do that, Papa? Well, she could be a hot dog who is also a witch. Dramatic music cue. Ha ha, Papa, you tell the best tales. Three cheers for Papa. Hop, hop, hop. Ah. Enough. <laughs> Enough now, children. Let's go eat the rest of Amelia Earhart for dinner. Can you believe it? Every week, I think this thing's gonna end. You can't say every week I think this is gonna end. You realize you control this, right? The crab's right through me, more or less. Jesus Christ. I saw your jaw drop when you found out that the evil twin sister was a witch. Now I'm pretty sure I look stoic as shit. Uh, we'll I do a replay. This could be a hot dog who is also a witch. Dramatic music cue. Good lord, that is, that is pure, he's just stunned right there. I'm having a hard time not strangling you right so, now. So, anyway. Tune in next week, I guess, if just log out a little early and you won't have to watch another flashback. Just jump ahead eight minutes into the video and then you're set. Okay. No more cliffhangers. I think he's referring to your stupid to hot dog saga or your hot daga. Uh, I agree, Sam. This is like a funny thing that people do because I, I think they say like, no more cliffhangers. No, no, no. There's Does no winky wink face, after that? no, no it's wink. just I, think there's a very... wink. I don't know if, was that Instagram? There, I don't think the, the emojis show up in no, comments on Instagram. He's... Sam, thanks for the wink. No, he didn't wink. I'll remind you all, you can go back, watch the tape. I was ready to end that no, thing at the no, crab no, joust. No, no. Oh god, here comes the charge. Oh no! Next time on BuzzFeed and Saw Postmortem. It's not over! <laughs> and Ryan stopped it and made it a cliffhanger. I and so not, he has set the That was one time, a, one cliffhanger is appropriate. It's a, it's a device used in many storytelling narratives. I was ready to end it right there. Right there. A cliffhanger now, is- Frankly, I don't even know if we're gonna get to the end of it this season. Okay, no, no, I we are- know. Oh my God. We'll see, we'll see. We're having fun. No, we're not. We're having fun, huh? Take the we out of that, make that you. Instagram page, and the moment some of you have been waiting for, most of you have been dreading, Let's continue to see what goes on with the hot dog. All right, now that we've gotten the appetizer out of the way, let's move on it's to the main a, course here. Just a healthy, healthy serving of appetizers. I'm not gonna trick you this week and say that He's we're starting gonna. with the joust and do some flashback. He's gonna, gonna flash, do that. He's gonna do it. Here we go. Music. An old warehouse, somewhere on the outskirts of a decaying city. Among the tangled mess of tech, a scientist, Dr. Lisa Bratwurst, sits crumpled on the floor, clinging a bottle. Whatever work had been going on here has clearly come to a grinding halt. Dr. Bratwurst is a character so richly drawn that even I, the narrator, and the person sitting next to me, Ryan Bergara, are electrified. My funding, my precious funding, it's all over now. I suppose I'll let myself rot, maybe let a raccoon eat me. Her eyelids are heavy now. She begins to dream of the machine, her life's work. How it could have changed the world if she just had a little more support, a little more time. Hop, 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 a knock at the door. Enter a hot dog, weathered. This hot dog has been places, seen things, but what? Dr. Dr. Bratwurst. Who, who are you? Dr. Bratwurst, I'm in urgent need of your services. My services? Yes, the machine. Haven't you read? The government, which is now run by witches, shut me down, pulled the plug on funding. And what a shame, 
I was so close, so close. If only I'd obtained the... Quantum relish? <gasps> what did you say? I said quantum relish. That's a good hashtag. Doctor, there's nothing stopping you now. I have what you need. It wasn't easy to get, but <laughs> like my dear old dad used to say, there's no free condiments in life. M most condiments are free, actually. How, How dare, dare you? you? And please, respect my father. May he rest in peace. This talk of your father seems very shoehorned into this conversation, so let's move past it and get to the business of starting up this mysterious machine. How long is this one? Shut what up. The fuck? Shut up. Gene, my French fry assistant, are you still here? Oh, you betcha, Dr. Brat. Gene is great, a character on a par with Elizabeth Bennet, or Pumbaa from The Lion King. I agree. Add this guy's face to Mount Rushmore already. Who, me? I'm just a little old french fry. Gene, the time has come, at last, to test the machine. We finally have the missing piece of the puzzle and a willing participant in our friend here. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I didn't catch your name. Terminator 2 music plays, or something similar that we can afford the rights to. As the machine lumbers to life, its mechanical groans reaching a deafening roar, a dazzling electric field encircles the hot dog. My name is Brandon, and I've got a joust to stop. Snap! Whew. Yikes. It was the future. This is from Instagram, the perks of being Molly, all caps, enthusiasm. Shane's story this week about the hot dogs was great, 10 out of 10. I gasped so loud when he said the, that he had to stop a joust. Keep them coming, Shane. F you, Ryan. <laughs> I love this hot dog saga. And we're gonna get to that hot dog saga in F just you. a moment. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Thanks, just, Molly. I imagine her typing F you, Ryan, while like doing this, just like that. F U R Y A N. Boom. Send. I did she that. She hits enter with her middle finger. <laughs> Licks it before. Fuck you, Ryan. Boom. Great. I, I mean, I, I could understand a little fiction. I, I had a comic book series that I made when I was in first grade called Sausage Man. I had several editions. Yeah, see, Ryan told me about this. He, he had a, a comic book when he was younger. I mean, this but, is in but, your but DNA. I wrote that when I was in first grade. Yeah, probably not nearly as rich and compelling as what I've first, first grade, unfurled so. here for the world. Um, Grown man, first grade Ryan, same idea. Hey, everyone's been waiting for this. I'm excited, the whole world's excited. Uh, without further ado, crab siblings, a family of hot dogs, a bratwurst scientist, a beloved French fry named Jean, characters etched in the annals of storytelling history, a fateful hot dog romance, an evil twin sister, hypnotized crabs, a plot so gripping and timeless that some have accused me of ripping off the bard himself, Will Shakespeare. Without further ado, what? let's continue. No one's accused you of that. As we last left off, zap! Brandon time warps into the center of the frenzied joust. On one side, Dan charges with conviction in his eyes, finally standing up for his family. From the opposite direction, Pam, who is straight up evil. Brandon has trained for this. He spent years in deep cover with the hot dog witches, read their ancient tomes, learned their ways, learned how to break their hypnotic curse. It's all riding on this. He clears his throat. Crabra cadabra. Time stands still as the haze lifts from the crab's eyes. Gina and Murray stop dead in their tracks. Murray! What? What are we doing, Gina? P Papa told us. He told us, Murray. We should have listened, Papa. Papa! Charge, beast! It's over, Pam. Your witch magic is no good here, thanks to whoever this other hot dog is. I'm your son from the future. Holy shit. It's a great plot point. Anyway, I saw you die as a child, and somehow it made Pam stronger. We never really figured out why, but it's not a plot hole or anything. So, tale as old as time, she took over the government and the world was run by her and her ilk, witches. Why did you do it, Pam? Why did you do any of this? Because, Rebecca, I'm straight up evil. Well, you know what they say. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, feed that evil hot dog to a goddamn raccoon. Gina, Murray, take her away. Shit! This is a really long one. Well, it's the finale, Ryan. We gotta. What do you? What do you want? 
You know, there's a lot of plot points. You made this thing keep going, so I'm wrapping up your mess here. I'm just saying there's something to the testament of less is more. Okay, well, I don't agree with that. Hop, hop, hop! They drag Pam away. Brandon, I can't thank you enough for spending your life embedded in a hot dog witch coven to travel back in time and save my life. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, now I can finally spend time with you and Ma. Um... I hate to be the one to point this out, but we've got two Brandons, RN. That's too many Brandons, right? We, we can't have two Brandons. That's bad for the fabric of reality and space-time, I think. They all look around awkwardly. What if I eat him, the baby Brandon? What if I eat myself? Okay, it's technically not murder or anything. Brandon eats himself. Hooray! Three cheers for our family! Hup, hup, Gene appears. I'm here too! The best character! Charles Dickens would kill a man to have written a character like Jean. At last, a happy ending. Applause, and like a song that sounds like Coldplay or something. Fade to black. Gonna be complete. Fade up from black. Murray and Gina deposit Pam on an, on an old log. Murray, this is what you get. This is the law of the wild. Gina, Murray, let's go. Before the raccoon arrives, I can't bear to watch this inevitable carnage. Pam struggles as a large, dark figure rises behind the log. It is the raccoon, come to feast. It lunges toward her, eyes gleaming. Pam, have at me, beast. Suddenly, a faint glowing orb descends from the sky and the seems of this moment. to pierce the monster's <clears throat> skin. The raccoon Dr. stops. It becomes blank, motionless. Its eyes glow, possessed. Pam speaks. Beast? The beast is quelled, Pam. I am a spirit, and I have made this beast's bodies, and I have made this beast's body my home now. I will not allow it to do you harm. Uh, I don't understand. Well, you see, Pam, I need your help to avenge my death. Who, who are you? My name, Pam, is Brandon, and I was eaten by myself. And together, Pam, you and I are going to kill me. Oh, hell yeah. Pam, you thought it was over. It's not over, Ryan. It's, it's never over. It's never gonna end. It's never gonna end. It's never gonna end. I'm gonna be completely honest. I zoned out for maybe two thirds of that story. Anyway, he eats them. So, we're gonna forget everything about the past seasons. Yeah. Um, not gonna mention any names, but maybe some certain storylines that don't matter anymore, we could probably get forever. Should I think for the rest of the season, when you do the intro at the beginning, I don't need to do my little animation thing. That's stupid, right? <laughs> oh, I'm glad we're on the same page to begin the season. That's so It was always just a popcorn man by the end, you know? So hey, see you guys and, and next while week. we're there, we have a little uh, ghost go by. He's just a little cowboy ghost, though. He's got a little cowboy hat, and he's just flying right by. Yeah, fun. That's fun. That's the end of the episode, right? Yeah, is that good enough? Yeah. Wait, there's no more hot dog. Oh, you want more hot dog? No, no, no. That's it. I thought I had to I'll, wrap it up quick. I'll, no, 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 no. Based okay. on that feedback. The hot dog okay. is dead. Like you said, it's more, dead. More hot he dog. He buried okay. it. This morning, I received a message from Shane. If you're doing the post-mortem today, at the end of the show, if you really want to annoy Ryan, mention that you're excited to see the return of the hot dog saga next week. And, <laughs> and you've heard that I've got some exciting things in store. That's the message I got from Shane today. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you, sir? You, <laughs> you think you fun, Shane. You think you could get me angry? You have. Um, but I'm not gonna let you hijack the show. We were having a good time. Then you had to bring up that nonsense with those stupid little cartoon characters. You know what? The, you know what the truth is. Last week he didn't do the hot dog story because he he didn't have time to write it. He he has writer's block. He's he's nervous. He, he's he's on tilt right now. He he's not. He doesn't have this well laid out storyline like you think he does. He's not like the three Star Wars movies coming out where he knows where the story is going. Right. This right. this dude's flying by the seat of his pants. He's sweating in Florida because of the heat and because of his own lack of ability to tell a story. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so. Don't you do, yeah. do it, don't you fuck. Ryan, I have a quick thing to say here. Uh, now that this is up. You know, people love when we bring in little animations. 
And uh, I, I recall last season we were doing a fun, we had a, like a fun, I can't remember, it was something with hot dogs or something. Uh, so I thought I'd bring that back. Just bring back our beloved characters that we all loved so much. You wanted them and based on your feedback, you said, no, more hot dogs. So I did not say that. <coughs> you it's did. Just another lie being peddled no, by Mr. Mate. More hot dogs. Honestly, it's, uh, they're just bouncing up. All right, and we're back. I think we last left off on the island where the joust had happened with Dan, his wife Rebecca, you their said, son. You, you said you weren't going to do this anymore. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Their son, who traveled back in time from the future, Brandon, and their friend and acclaimed character, Jean, who is French fries. Oh, Dan and sweet Brandon. We're a family again, a real family, with a tasty side of Jean. Oh, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Love that Jean. Oh, were you looking for reaction? Yeah. I, I was actually, I tuned out to be honest. Now Dan the hot dog in response to that says, holy shit, Jean. Look, everyone, Rebecca's evil sister Pam is dead, I think. Those crabs left her on a log for a beast to consume. It's time for us to put this whole crazy saga behind us and remember what it means to be a family. Brandon says, three cheers for my hot dad. That means it's like a hot dog version of a dad. You just say hot dad, like hot mom. Oh, I got it, yeah, you know, no explanation needed. Hup, hup, hup. A letter falls from the sky. The hup, no one says hup. Hey, 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 I got a letter. Read it, Gene. Boo, it's from my sister, Jebra. She's getting married in California, and she wants me to get my old band back together and play for her wedding. Band? Well, it's a long story, y'all, but I think I'll have time to tell it, because we're gonna get that band back together, and we're gonna play that wedding. This calls for a road trip. Hot Dogga 2, Buns on the Run. You got some cool... There's nothing cool about this there. story, so just say music. I, did you? I, it's like I can feel people. Oh, was that the end? Yeah, that's we're we're okay. in it now. Yeah, he's got to get his band back together. Oh, he's got to get his band together. You know, it's he's pretty gotta, good. He's do what he's got to do. All right. A great. road trip. Oh man, a road trip sounds great. That's fun. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was the worst. Send in all your Gene you, fan art. You keep it in a little baby shoebox. You got like two little letters. A thousand baby shoeboxes. One, one addressed from yourself. Unbelievable. Dear future Shane, keep doing the hot dog story. Everyone loves it. Everyone, everyone loves it. Quote Ryan Vergara, everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Woo! Um, whoa, what's happening down on the bottom of the screen, Ryan? It's happening again. <laughs> Somewhere in America, a ramshackle boxcar cruises across the backbone of the nation. Here's Rebecca. Gene, what? Wait, quick question. What? Why is Gene getting married? Uh, if hang on, from we'll the address future? it. We'll address it in this you, one. You have not heard of the butterfly effect? Uh, we're, we're addressing it in this one. Okay. Gene, what a joy for us to witness your sister Jebra's wedding. I just hope we make it in time. Well, you and me both, Becky. Gene, since we have some time to kill on this beautiful boxcar. Who's I'm, this? This is Brandon. Yeah. I'd like to get to know you better. Ask away, baby. What's your full name? Gene! Where are you from? Wait, wait a second. Is this guy has one name? What is he, fucking Sting? He's Gene. He's Bono? Where are you from? Ooh, Idaho, numbnuts. What's the deal with your band? Sweet Gene and the Risky Fixins? Yes, Sweet Gene and the Risky Fixins. Mm, terrible name. We formed in the early 90s when we were all in nursing school. We've won 487 Grammys and once stopped the assassination of the hot dog president. Gene, I don't mean to be rude to french fries, but how are we going to your sister's wedding? And how does your band exist currently if you traveled back in time with my big son, Brandon? Oh, what you mean, lady? These people are all real, right? Not ideas incepted into your brain by a witch luring us into a trap. Oh, you're nuts. Our witch days are over, remember? Or I'm not french fries. Wait, wait a second, what? Wait, what the fuck's going on? Nothing, everything's fine. Wait, why, wait, I, why is Gene a witch now? G he's not. Our witch days are, oh, that was a different he said character. our witch days are over. Hey, your voice wasn't, yeah, it wasn't. Beloved. Pretty sure this is a witch trap. Next stop, picking up the first band member in Texas, USA. 
I got so much great gene fan art this weekend. I don't Make know sure why. you at Ryan on all those. No, don't he at loves me. Them. Do not at me. At him. Send your best fan art of Ryan giving Gene a hug. What the? Uh, no, don't do BFFs. that. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no. He'll love it. Quickly, Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga. A hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Vergara, written by nope, me. No, nope, no, wait, no. And adored by Stop viewers right and critics alike. This, this is being done in spite of Commissioned by effort. Ryan Vergara. He no, started this. Take that sentence out. Texas, somewhere off an old dirt road, a dilapidated watering hole about to close for the evening. Behind the bar, a grizzled old bottle of root beer. Someone walks in. We're closed. No, oh, don't worry, partner. I'm not looking for much. Just a sarsaparilla and a few words with an old pal. No, we're out of sarsaparilla. Not sure about the other stuff. Stephen Rootbeer, do you mean to tell me you've forgotten your dearest friend and former bandmate, Gene? I'm critically adored. Wait a second. So this root beer is selling sarsaparilla? Yeah, he said they're all out. But he's a root beer. He works at a bar. But he's a root beer himself, so he's... Are people drinking him? Does he have any root beer left in his bottle? He works at a bar. What, but do I'm people just... drink the blood out of humans? Well, that's also when a bartender is serving something that's not him. I don't understand what you're saying. You just said here. that he's serving sarsaparilla. Uh, we got to get back to this, Ryan. Do we? You know, I, I think it's... Save your questions for the end. Well, or, or submit them for the, the Q&A next week. Are people sipping out of his brain? That's okay. Um, okay. Can't say the name rattles a tambourine. Look, Steven. I'm putting the band back together. Like hell you are. Like hell I am. It's my sister, Stephen, Jebra. She's getting married. Needs us to play. I can't do it alone. I need the risky fixins. Well, I, I didn't know French fries had siblings. We sure do. You talked to Melba yet? Ain't the risky fixins without her playing sticks. I'm about to hop on the train and do that very thing. And I'd like to have you along for the ride. All right, but listen here. I'm only doing this under one condition. I'm all ears. You gotta let me lay down some seriously chunky bass lines. No, oh, you got yourself a deal. Now we've got a train to catch. A crow ate one of my eyes at the bank last Labor Day, by the way. That's why I have an eye patch now. Whoa, what a story. That's the end of it? Yeah. The so, band's getting back together. This is getting good. So, just to be clear, yeah. the last... How many episodes have you done on this stupid shit now this season? I, I don't know, I guess. They've just been conversations about a hypothetical band that doesn't make sense. That's the journey, man. The so band's getting back we're together. Just, we've just watched Talking Heads for the past three episodes. Uh, they're probably better than the Talking Heads. That's a, you know, it's, a it's critically just, acclaimed band. This, the Risky Fixins are probably even more acclaimed than them. You got any more expository dialogue you want to... Push on the audience. Look, they made me keep it expository this season because there was too much action last season. Ooh, it's okay. hard to animate. That's uh, just a, uh, you know, blame your tools. Shoddy craftsmanship, blame the tools. That's kind of what's happening right here. The, oh, they made, me, they made me it, tone it down. I couldn't really go that far, so I had to make the dialogue exposition. Uh, that, the studio, man, the studio is pushing me. I'm telling you, I got some good stuff up in my mind. That's you, by the way. That's... I know you really hurt my feelings. Good. Now I'm gonna get their sympathy. <laughs> no. That's, leave it. End it on that. Put a put sad music over it. A slow zoom on me. If you put End that in, no, no, if you put yeah. that in, you gotta put this part in no, where no, he's no. like, okay, if you put that in, make them be sad Don't for a second, it. and then include this part no. where he says, now they're gonna be sad. Include this. Don't I'm gonna make sure this. this goes in the episode. God damn it! Yes! yes! Well, you know what? It doesn't even matter because I actually am really sad. No, no, you can't pull it back like that. No, you can't. I gotta go. You're not fooling me, buddy. You're not fooling anybody. It's been fun, Ryan. You're not fooling me. He just flicked me off out of sight. He flicked me off off frame right now. He's flicking me off right now. No, no. Uh, speaking of truly infuriating, you gonna do it? You gonna do your dumb thing here? You're you're inviting it now. I don't I mean, even. There's to... no point in fighting it. It's. Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a Hot Dog Saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara, nope, stop. written by me take, and adored you, by every single viewer. You should take that sentence out. Okay, you know what, Where there's no we? point. We there's see no a point lovely, serene pond. Uh, here comes Stephen Rupier and Gene. Oh, them hot dogs on the train sure are terrific. They're a loving family, compelling, sort of like something out of an Arthur, Arthur Miller play. Mm, say there, Gene. I don't mean to be rude to French fries, but where in God's blue hell are we? Central Park. 
and you say this is where we'll find Melba, suddenly a voice. You two have got some nerve showing up around here. The boys look over to see their old pal, Melba Dill. And baby, she's floating. Mm, that's a pickle. Melba, that's a long pickle. time no see. Yes. Where are you getting the band back together? Mm. Yeah, what the beloved french fries said. Now I think it's quite clear that I'm comfortable here, floating, as pickles do. I wake up, I float. I float all day. Did I used to float? No, I damn well didn't. I used to play drums for an acclaimed rock and roll band. A band so good that the Beatles, our enemies, quit making music, grew mullets, and opened up a really good pizza shop in Cleveland. Yes, we were on top of the world, but you let the music get away from you, you idiot men. You blew it all on wine and trampolines. Did it ever occur to you, Stephen Rootbeer, that I loved you and your mustache? Well, I don't anymore, and I see you've shaved your mustache, you idiot. And Gene, you were like a brother to me, but pickles don't have brothers, clearly. In short, gentlemen, I don't care if you're getting the band back together. You can't, you, you can go to a baseball. The day we broke up was the best day of my life. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to float because that's what pickles do. You need a glass of water after that? That was a long paragraph. Wait, also, why you, why do you keep harping on this pickles floating in ponds thing? No, that's not a thing. It's, that's just her character. It's definitively not a thing. Like, this is you trying to bleed your weird sense of reality into let, this, let this even weirder sense of uh, Let's just pregnant pause play, play. This is dramatic. Sure, great. Pregnant pause, go away. Yeah, do it. It's We're just all my, of our seats. It's just my sister Jebra's wedding is all. Well, I, I didn't know french fries had siblings like that. Oh, come on, what do you say, Melba? Oh, you idiots. Fine, one last performance. Well, the risky fixins are officially back on the map. Whatever, there's a raccoon that's been snooping around these parts lately, so I was thinking of leaving anyway. The band is back together, folks. I mean, do you want something? What do you Man. want? Do you want something from me here? I, yeah. I, what instrument does this fry possibly play? Does he have? Does he have hands? I, I can't remember. Are the fries his appendages? Yeah, he's got arms. He does? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you sure? Oh, well, I guess I don't remember. I, Ryan uh, uh, forgot that Gene has arms. Yeah, so if you want to make some fan art of Ryan admiring Gene's arms, sure. Yeah, go for it. That's what we're going yeah, for that's this a, week. What a crime I've committed here. It's getting dark in here. Yeah, I know why. Oh, because it's darkness falls. It's trying to hide the bullshit that's gonna. Come Our after weekly Q and A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. Um, the whole character—they're all back right now. Let's get them all on screen. Oh, they're man. back at the they're train. All back. They're all meeting up. Oh, the risky fixins are back together. Thanks for waiting on the train this whole time, Dan, Rebecca, and Brandon. It's fine. Nothing's stopping us now. Let's head to that wedding. Suddenly, a corndog voice. Uh, attention folks, Conductor Craig here, having uh, some technical issues with the train, so we're gonna be stalled for a bit. So this is a new character, corndog conductor? It's just a conductor over the, he's, a, he's on the speaker. Oh, I thought he was the corndog. No, no, it's just his voice. Um, having uh, some technical issues with the train, so we're gonna be stalled for a bit. We'll try to get everything patched up and have us moving as soon as we can. Well, dust bunnies. Say, you know what we can do to pass the time? Let's share some fun facts about ourselves. No, let's share some fun facts about Gene. Well, my fun fact about Gene is that I saw him do a magic trick once where he sat on his own lap. That's a good trick. Well, my fun fact about Gene is that he is French fries, but he is also a poet. Oh, sweet of you. Well, my fun fact about Gene is that I've dreamt about him every night of my life, even before I knew him. Oh, what the heck? My fun fact about Gene is that I'm suddenly afraid my wife will leave me for him, but he's a nice guy, so that's okay. Ah, oh, Dan, come on. My fun fact about Gene is that I met him in the future, and I don't know how his band exists in the present. Oh, you're nuts, Brandon. Oh, hey, folks. Oh, Conductor Craig. Well, the train's all fixed. Classic case of mustard and the gears. Ugh, classic. Well, it'll be a haul with the headwind, but we should be on track to get you to that wedding in Hawaii next week. Hooray. Well, it's, we learned so much about Gene this week. You want that smile off your face? Never. <laughs> Here's one from Facebook, Joseph Cornell. Hot dog show character ideas. Hot dog show. That's what. Yeah. I gotta brand that better. Really gotta push the brand there. Yeah. Because that's mean, not what it's called. It seems appropriate. Joseph. Uh, sassy, or sorry, Samuel the Sassy Club Sandwich. Pretty good. 
Randy the racist rack of ribs. Not the time for that here, Joseph. <laughs> Willie the wacky wonton, okay? <laughs> Randy the racist rack Elbert the crotchety egg salad sandwich. That's an A+. Plus. <laughs> Bono the big ass beefy bacon burger. Yeah, pretty I, alliterations there. Yeah, I sure. love the alliteration. Also, they should be given superpowers of some kind. Last idea, can we somehow trick Ryan into voicing one of these many brilliant characters? One or many of these brilliant characters. Hashtag hot dog cavalcade forever. Some great ideas there, Joseph. Prepare yourself for possibly the dumbest thing you've heard all week. Here we go. Maybe even your life. Nah. All right, our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we both call the Hot Daga, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara, written oh, yeah, by me, and That's adored cool. by every single viewer. How long was this one, roughly? So I could get to, I could prepare myself. That's pretty quick. Good. A Hawaiian resort. Sausage priest stands above a crowd. He speaks. Welcome to the wedding in Hawaii now, everyone. We're gathered here today to witness the union of two souls, Jebra and Maisie. Before I do my thing, I believe Jebra wanted to say a few words. Well, I wanted to thank everyone for making the trip. My brother Gene and his band, the Risky Fixins, who I'm sure we'll hear from at the reception. Oh, did you want us to play? Ha ha ha. Dan and his wife, Rebecca, their big son, Brandon, Nice to meet you. Tony Pepperoni. Hi. Bradley. Uh-huh. The Gherkin Brothers. Love you, Jebra. Tiffany Elizabeth Ellerby. Charmed, I'm sure. The Duke. Aha. Uh -huh. Slippery Mike the Mustard Pile. I could see the squirrel wheel on his thing there, and I could see there's so much more. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. Hang in there. Hang in there. Little Mr. B. Happy to be here. Pauline, who is a pretzel? Mmm. Um, uh, wi Willie the wacky wonton? <laughs> Pauline, who isn't a pretzel? What a beautiful day. Mike Soup? Yep. Queen Meatballs? Hello! A giant possessed raccoon and Rebecca's evil twin sister Pam? Wait a minute, you weren't invited! Oh no! Gene, what's happening? That's right, it's me. Pam, and I'd like to welcome you to hell. Time to die. <clears throat> That's it, right? It's done. It's, uh, you're just uh, you're just ending your things with silly roll calls, and then slapping it on the internet, calling it a story. That's... How'd Pam get there? Oh shit! How did Pam get there? The Q&A concluded, I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me, and adored by every single viewer. A beach in Hawaii. It's weird, there's actually people in this room and they look like they're the opposite of everything you this just is, described. Oh, we just got a thumbs up. He did that uh, because he wanted to appease a you. Beach he was actually in, falling asleep. A beach in Hawaii. A wedding has been gripped by terror at the appearance of a maniacal hot dog witch and a possessed raccoon. Prepare to die! Flash to white. A hall of shadows. A large hooded figure sits on a throne. Greetings, master. Explain the raccoon. I am Brandon, master. Son of the hot dog clan. Eaten by my future self. Now possessing a raccoon. Makes sense. And what has become of the hot dog clan? The joust did not go as planned. We were nearly fed to crabs. It was a mess, but it was hugely, it was a hugely satisfying finale, season, but it was a hugely, it was a hugely satisfying some, season finale. I am displeased, but that does sound narratively rich. The hot dogs, they must be destroyed. We have one last idea, master. Spill it, Pam. Well, you know that prophecy that every hot dog child hears on their eighth birthday about the hot dog who survives a crab joust and is then tossed into a, the fiery pit of a Hawaiian volcano where their soul is forged by lava into the gauntlet of ultimate power, or GUP. Can you move your thumb a little bit? I just want to see how much longer we got in this. Ah, the There's GUP, a lot of more. course. Hmm. Yes, I can see how that prophecy seems to partially align with the narrative thus far. How could there possibly be more? Very convenient. 
So your plan then is to drop Dan the hot dog into a volcano, then pr procure the gup for me. Mm, that's right. And we'll drop the rest of the hot dog family too, because fuck them. Very well. Pam, I suggest you use your witch hallucinations to guide Gene to Hawaii. Wherever he goes, they will follow. He is a born leader, extremely charismatic. True. Understand, this is your last chance, Pam. If you fail me again, you will know a fate worse than death. But if you succeed, we will rule the world. <laughs> Laugh with me. <laughs> Ryan, the hot dogga is still a better love story than Twilight, winky face. Hashtag Shaniacs, hashtag R.I.P. Bugaras. You don't have to attack the Bugaras like that. And also, that is not high praise for the hot dogga. Yeah. Twilight sucks, the hot <laughs> dogga sucks too. They're, well, they, it sucks less. No, they both suck. Mm, I don't know. They're, they, they're definitely adjacent. Yeah. Adjacent territories for sure. They're yeah, touching, the borders that. are touching. See you guys later. With the grand finale, of the hot dog, everybody loves this. Our weekly- Is this gonna be it? Is this, are you tying this bad boy off? Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the hot dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Bergar, written by me and adored by every single viewer. Last time. At least you have the decency to talk fast when you get through this quicker. We learned that Pam and the ghost of Brandon, acting under their evil master's orders, lured Gene and the entire hot dog family <clears throat> to this volcano, acting on some kind of prophecy. How did they orchestrate this? Isn't Gene from the future? All of these questions will be answered. Prepare to die! Now hang on a second. What? What gives you the right to interrupt this perfectly delicious wedding? It's all fake, Dan. Delicious wedding. A ploy. Genes from the future, remember? These are all witch holograms oh of God. fake memories meant to lure you all to this Hawaiian volcano so we could kick you into the lava and kill you forever, as the prophecy dictates. You're telling me that the risky fixings aren't real? No, they're witch holograms. And what about Jebra and Maisie? Jebra's not even a real name. Witch holograms. And all the wedding guests? Witch holograms again, except for Mike Soup. What a beautiful day. This whole wedding venue is a hologram. It's actually a witch cave above a volcano. And now I'm gonna pull this lever and, hold on one goddamn minute, Maisie. That's right. I may be corn and I may be a witch hologram, but I was conjured to love Jebra. And she's as real to me as anything I've ever known. And you gotta be stupid to think that I'm going to let the simple fact that we're both holograms created by some annoying hot dog witch and her raccoon pal get in the way of our day. The raccoon is actually the ghost of my younger self. I ate him and now he's mad. I don't care, Brandon. Witch lady, Pam, whatever your deal is, will you press pause on your shit for five minutes? Uh, I, f fine. Good, sausage priest, you're real, marry us. By the power zested in me, I now pronounce you fries and corn. Applause. Beautiful. Was that it? No. Fuck. I'm still gonna kill everyone. I don't give a shit, Pam. This is our day. Risky fixins. I know you're mostly holograms, but surely you've been practicing. Play our song. Oh, you got it, ladies. One, two, three, four. I have this recorded, so. We're just gonna wait one minute and 20 seconds for this song to play. We won't hear it here, but um, let me start the stopwatch here. Wait, what? The song's playing. I have to now imagine a thing I don't want to imagine under any circumstance. No witch can say. No witch can say. Which way is the oh, right is way? I feel like this is worse somehow. You just gotta trust what you feel in your heart. I don't think I've hated you more than I've seen. Oh, okay. How things ever come to be. Like how the hot dog became high art. An evil hot dog witch is trying to tear us apart. You proud of yourself right now? Is that what's happening? You proud of this but as long as you've got Impossible. your friends, there's nothing you happy. cannot do. Come witches or raccoons, no sir, they cannot get to you. It helps. Is it really a minute and twenty seconds? 
Rich, compelling, adored worldwide But it's hard to relish life Without your best friends by your side Oh, thank you very much Is that it though? Does Everybody applause Pam. Pam, it looks like something's changed with Pam. This performance has made my heart grow three sizes. Oh, really? It's a Christmas miracle. Yes, but no matter the size, it's still a witch heart, dingbats. Baby Brandon, pull the lever. She pulls, he pulls the lever, everybody falls, and now I'm going to scream for all the characters, mm. which we can all overlay together. Yeah. Ah! Now that's what I call a cliffhanger. And for those of you who haven't watched Postmortem before, we do a fun thing at the end of every episode where we just do a fun, quick little animation. Wait a second. And here's, so tune in every week. You want to stick around for this because it's always very funny, short, Why? going on. So here comes a funny little holographic corn running across the screen. Isn't that, isn't that funny? That's all. That's did, all. I don't even remember, did the hot dog end? Come witches or raccoon. Huh? Did it end? The hot dog. It's hard to relish life. Did that, it, is it over? I can't remember. It's still a witch heart, dingbats. Ah! Oh, do you want more? No, I don't want more. I'm just curious because I'd always You didn't out. want it to end, I see. No, no, that's not it. Okay, well. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, no. Right, no, 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 no. Yeah. Let's end the episode yeah. there. Okay. Funny little corn, ha ha ha. Funny good stuff. Okay, good. Funny little corn, you like the corn? Oh my God, that door just opened on its own. It's not a ghost, Ryan, it's just a person. Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the hot dog. Wait a second, no, you said yeah, I it was done. No, you said last, it was done. last week you seemed like you wanted more. No, I was confirming that it was in fact dead. It's kind of like at the end of a horror movie when the, the, the killer is laying on the ground. You want to make sure he's dead, so you shoot him in the head I again. I think you said, it's dead? I was double tapping you, for sure, well, to make sure you were dead. Okay, we'll just do one more season of this. No, we are not. <laughs> I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara, nope. repeatedly, nope. written by me and adored by every single, single viewer. Nope. Um, on the shores of a lava lake, a french fries snaps awake, gasping for ear. <gasps> what? What? Where am I? What happened? From a distance, a call. Jean! Oh, we, we, we've got to stop them. The witch. Jean, it's me, Maisie. Maisie? The holographic corn wife of your holographic sister, Jebra, who I fear has perished, but I cannot attempt to process that at the moment, for the fear of the emotional toll it would take on me. What, what, what happened? Jean, you've got to get your head in the game. I think that shitty witch succeeded in her evil plan, sacrificing Dan, the hot dog, into the lava. Well, how'd we survive? We must have swam to shore. Well, wait, but if Dan's been sacrificed, then... Then the prophecy has come true, and the gauntlet of ultimate power, or GUP, yes, the GUP, has appeared. It's only a matter of time before the witch and raccoon pr procure it and deliver it to their dark master. Then all is lost. Oh, what a plot! It's a lot, but it's very good. I guess we lost. We lost everything. Let's <laughs> get back into character. <laughs> oh, what a plot! <laughs> what a plot! It's a lot. But I guess we lost. We lost everything. We could go back in time to stop it all. No, oh, Mike Soup, how'd you survive? I swam to shore, just like you guys. The lava was too hot. What do you mean, go back in time? I mean, we can just take my spaceship and head to the wormhole in the Graxulon Quadrant. Hop into that thing and bloop, back in time. Oh, okay, that sounds easy. I have to be honest, it's not easy. But what choice do we have? Uh, true. Well, let's do it then, for Jebra, and Dan, and Brandon, and all those other breathtaking characters who are dead now. Okay then, space. Space. Little space! It's a space season. 
I'm excited. That is it for Postmortem. Now we move on to the post show. Uh, our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you Wait, to the- Wait, can I just, I wanna see how Part long of the show, no. Nope. Just give me the on. Not that long. Chill, bro. Yeah, just give me the courtesy of knowing how long I have to sit through this stupid shit. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Naga. The hot Dog Saga. I guess I could check my emails. Commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me, and adored by every single viewer. A can of soup, a french fries, and a holographic corn board a ramshackle old spaceship. Welcome to the Minestrone, a first-class twin engine. She's a little beat up, but she'll get you to the drive through if you know what I'm saying. Like this ship, it's a butte, a shippy butte. How'd you snag such a fine chunk of metal like this? I ran guns. You don't mean in the space wars. You mean when Space Pope Chili the Ninth declared war on soups? Yes, of course. No need to explain that. We'll remember it always. Many soups died. Do which side did you fight on, Mike? Were you in the sauce? Gene, that's rude. That is rude, Gene. I was in the sauce. I fought for soups. I'm soup. Thank you for your service. Say, you're not THE Mike Soup, are you? The Soup Baron? The pirate captain who personally assassinated Space Pope Chili the Ninth and brought an end to the space war, but also blew up a civilian transport in the process and became a space pariah, forced to the Outer Rim, where he continued to fight the remaining hostile factions of the Chile Empire who refused to acknowledge the Treaty of Versailles? That was a mouthful. I just realized there's probably no. a lot of people that don't even know what's going on if they're tuning in for the first time. No, I'm not that Mike Soup. Okay, where are we going? We're headed to planet Tamat Zero. I know a guy there who can get us the Bernoulli converter we need to make the hyperspace jump to the wormhole in the gra in the Graxil Graxil <coughs> in the Graxilon quadrant. Your body's trying to save you. Enough talky time. More spacey time, idiots. We gotta get back in. T we have to go back in time so I can save my dead wife and all your stupid friends. Very well, Minestrone. Yes, Captain. That's the spaceship talking. Engage the twins and set a course for Tomat Zero. Aye, aye, Captain. And then we, like, play some Star Trekish music. Are you doing the hell impression? I guess it's, it's kind of like a computer, yeah. There's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of backstory in this. Are you pleased with it so far this season? I was thinking, though, we have a, a PA today that's working on the show for the first time, and she looked... Very, very confused. She's jumping up and down right now. No, she's not. She's sitting down, actually. Yeah, that's, yes, I was inspired by Tolstoy. I think she may have mouthed, did you just say, yes, I was inspired by Tolstoy? That's what, I think that's what she was asking. No, she, she didn't Tolstoy? ask Tolstoy? No, no, okay. Well, well that's Well, Dostoevsky, but uh, get, Tolstoy's get, not my scene, so. Lee, Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, the Hot Dog Saga, commissioned by Ryan, uh, what's your middle name? Steven, Ryan Steven Bergara. That's not my middle name. Written by me and adored by every single viewer in a darkened lair, surrounded by geothermal vents, belching putrid air. The Dark One sits on his throne, waiting. That's him. Finally, they arrive. Pam, an evil hot dog witch, and Brandon, a raccoon possessed by a hot dog child. Master, have you succeeded? Yes, Master. We threw them into a volcano. They're gone. All of them? Most of them, I think. Except a hologram and a french fries. But Dan the hot dog, he was devoured by magma. Yes, my brother-in-law was devoured by magma. Very good. Then the prophecy is complete and the gauntlet of ultimate power, or GUP, is mine. GUP! 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 They cheer. I will now summon the gauntlet with the ancient rites. Moose, Tardunketch, Upandpik, L2. Uh, the ground shakes. A gauntlet appears with a... The ground shakes. Yeah, that's me, because it's unsteady now. Oh, Ryan, react. 
you sure you react, Ryan? No. Oh, oh, he's loving it. A gauntlet appears with a flash and falls onto the master's hand. Pam and Brandon watch in horror as the master grows by about 25% and his eyes get more evil, signifying him becoming more evil. I am the end now. I will grow. Grow until I can eat the sun and plunge the earth into despair. Wow, hell yeah. Now we can finish off those french fries and that old can of soup. Soup? Yeah, Mike, soup. The soup survived. Yeah, yeah, who gives a shit? It's not like he's french fries or that hologram. You have disappointed me, hot dog witch. The dark master's eyes burn red as he raises his gauntlet, pointing at his hapless minions. Hup! A flash, a sizzling crack. It rings like a bell. Where Pam once stood, there is nothing but a bun and two eyeballs. Brandon stares in awe. Holy shit. Pam's dead. Do you, uh... Pam's dead, baby. Do you ever actually hear the words that are coming out of your mouth when you're saying these uh, silly little stupid tales? I do. I mean, really hear them. I, I don't... I do. You, you stand by them. Yeah. I do. Then that's the saddest thing I've heard all month. Q&A concluded, I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga. A hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me, and adored by every single viewer. Space, the final frontier. Don't you dare. These Don't are you the dare. travels Start of it over, start it over. Don't put that part in there. Space, the final you frontier. These are the travels dare you. of the starship Minestroni. Its mission, to reach the Graxulon wormhole to travel back in time to save our friends and loved ones from burning up in a volcano and then rock out to a baller, risky fixin' song. The captain! Ensign. Exiting FTL travel. Bring her in slow. This pony's been in the stable for a month of Sundays. Aye, aye, Captain. Captain, our scanners are picking up a planet. Of course they are. It's a planet. Ah, uh, Tomoth Zero. It's been too long. Why the hell are we going here again? An old friend of mine. <laughs> He's got the Bernoulli converter we need to make it to the Graxilon quad Quadrant and slip our asses through that saucy wormhole. Uh... What's he doing on a planet like this? Based on these scans, it looks like a swampy pile of junk. You'll see. He's very compelling. Perhaps more compelling than Jean. Perhaps the most compelling character in existence. <laughs> that's, uh, that's very funny. Ensign French fries, plot our approach to Tomat Zero. Uh, sure. Boop, boop, boop. Captain, we're being held. Put him on the screen. <laughs> If it isn't Mike Soup, the beloved space ace. Did you say held or hailed? Because you're supposed to say hailed. I said hailed. Oh, that sounded like you said held. No, I said hailed. Uh, chili pirates, surrender your ship and we'll let you live. I don't negotiate with assholes. Maisie, shields up, arm the torpedoes. That was pretty funny. Captain, we don't have any torpedoes. Oh shit, I forgot to buy new ones. Ho, ho, ho. Well, Captain, their torpedoes are headed our way! Ho, 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 ho! The crew braces themselves as the ship shudders and an explosion rips through the bridge. Wow. Woo! If you're a... Outside loving van. I'm tired of seeing Ryan hate on the hot dogger so much. If you don't like it, you can just, you know, fuck off. <laughs> Pretty funny. No. I think it's a Even steaming... Even though you created it all. I didn't create it all. You gave, I it think the, you gave it the little kick it needed. You kicked it and sent it into orbit. And now it's just going on forever. Never end. As an anarchist once said, madness is like gravity. All it really needs is just a little push. Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the oh, show we call right the I Hot Daga. A hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me and adored to, by every single viewer. It, and so if I you don't like that. it, you can just, you know, fuck off. The jungle planet of Tamat Zero. A holographic corn is suddenly awake now. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm alive. And not a kernel out of place, if I do say so myself. Hmm. Maisie to Minestrone, over. Minestrone, so do you read me? Over. So tired. Mm. I must have been thrown from the ship during descent, and if I survive the crash, it's highly likely that the rest of the crew is still alive. Looks like I'll have to trek through these jungles to track them down. 
Must get a move on. Never know what lurks out here in the... Suddenly, from the bush, a noise. Oh, wow, okay, hey. Who goes there? Oh, no, no, hey, come on, nothing to worry about here. Just a pluple passing through. That doesn't make any sense. You phantom weirdo, show yourself. It's funny that you'd say that phrase in this. <laughs> hey, you got it, <laughs> you got it, corn. A pluple exits from the bush. <laughs> Just a pluple, nothing to see here. Come on, cut me some slack. Who the hell are you? Oh, me, I'm a pluple named Garce. Plupple's a variety of fruit native to this planet, and, I, and I'm a piece of it. So, you know, that's what I am, and as far as I can tell, I, I think I've answered your question. So, hey, everything's good. A plupple, huh? Oh, yeah, born and raised. Come from a long line of plupples. Sort of like a peach, but sexier and blue. My parents were very juicy, and I am too. Fine, I'm Maisie. My ship crashed on this planet, and I need to find my crew. Oh, yeah, sure, I saw that thing rocket through the sky. Hell of a dust cloud where that thing went down. You saw it crash? Oh, yeah, sure, I saw it. Had to be, uh, oh, three clicks southeast of the plateau. I can take you there. Mm, you don't seem trustworthy. Oh, whoa, oh, I'm plenty trustworthy. Plupples can't lie. What? Oh, yeah, sure, check it out. Hey, Farch. Farch enters from the bush. Oh, howdy, Gars. Howdy, lady who's a vegetable I've never seen before because it's not native to our planet. Hey, Farch, why don't you do me a favor and tell me your name ain't Farch? What's your thinking there, Gars? Oh, the lady's all rattled. She doesn't trust a pluple. She doesn't trust a pluple? Yeah, she doesn't trust a pluple. Why don't you go on and help me out and give her some reassurance? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what? If you if you if you think this is She's insufferable, meeting some aliens. if you think this is un inseparable with uh, with animations, imagine me having to listen to this without animations. This is this is literally the worst. <laughs> Anyways, continue your. Yeah, she doesn't trust a pluple. Why don't you go on and help me out, and give her some reassurance, tell a lie. Mm. Well, all right, but you owe me. Here we go. My name's not Farch. It's Troil. Help me out! <laughs> Okay, take me to where you saw the ship crash. And so, Maisie and her strange new friends set out into the wilds of Tamat Zero. Will they find the rest of their crew? Will they ever reach Mike Soup's acquaintance and obtain the Bernoulli converter they need to travel to the Graxilon Quadrant and slip through a wormhole to rewrite history and save their friends? Hopefully find lost. out next time on the Hot Daga, a Ryan Bergara production. Nope, 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 not my production. I started putting like a fun thing at the end here. Oh yeah, it doesn't Is that make good? It, no, it's, uh, it's more infuriating because it suggests there's another one. That's good, right? I don't know what the fuck was going on with Plop or whatever the fuck Plopple. is. Plopple! Yeah, look at the smile. No, it was, it was <laughs> we so got him. No, it was dumb. Uh, back from Gramtown, Cat, Catmo the Fuzzy Cat. Okay. Q and A. I must say, I was mostly indifferent towards the hot dogga, but you really won me over with the plupples. Now the username makes sense. Hashtag Shaniacs. Catmo. Catmo the Fuzzy Cat. That sounds like somebody who enjoys the hot dogga. Yeah, it does. I did get a lot of feedback. Everybody loved the plupples. Spoilers, this week we have an incredible guest voice actor. And I was disappointed to find, he informed me before this, that this person's not gonna come in to live read it. I have it Because I actually do have the door locked, so I thought that that was gonna be Oops. kind of funny to have his guest actor try and get in and knock on the door, like, let me in, and I'd yeah. be like, no. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be fun. It's all right. What are you doing? I'm just taking, I gotta queue up some stuff for the dogger. It's all good. Thanks for watching Postmortem this week. Okay, well that does, that does. <clears throat> Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me, and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my buns. I changed that from, you can, what was it, fuck off or something? Now it's more thematically, tie the buns. Mm. Fun, right? Good. In the jungles of the alien planet of Tamat Zero, Maisie the holographic corn follows Garce the Pluple to the supposed crash site of the starship Minestrone. Uh, so, what's your deal again, corn lady? Uh, I'm a hologram, dreamed by a witch. It's a shitty situation, but I'm in love with my dead hologram wife, so I'm going to keep existing until I can travel back in time and save her, and I guess, Earth. <laughs> Makes sense if you actually track the story, probably. Wait, you're from Earth? Wow, okay, yeah. Why, you've heard of it? Oh yeah, for sure. I heard about that place on the Space News. Yeah, guess some uh, big evil guy with a nasty glove is chewing it all up? Said he ate the moon as an appetizer. I'm guessing that has to do with all my shit. 
Mm, wonder if Earth's tasty. Big evil guy should consider eating this planet, way things are going. Well, what do you mean by that? Eh, plight of the plopples. It's rough, corn. I'm, I'm basically the smartest plopple in the galaxy on account of my papa teaching me how to read. And even I'm a straight up bonehead. The two of them pass an idle plopple. Oh, hey, Smeech. Plop, plop, plop. Oh, woo. It's actually making me feel sick. I actually feel physically <laughs> sick. All right, man. Hey, say hi to the grandkids. See, they're dummies. And they're all marching to the beat of old Dr. Goondis. Dr. Goondis? Hmm? Oh yeah, some nutty old guy that made a home for himself here after the Space Wars. Used to be a real technical whiz. Charismatic as all hell, but he's been a little funny for a while. Plupples love him though. Space Wars, huh? Wonder if this is the guy Mike Soup planned for us to meet. Well, I hope not. Dude's cracked. Oh hey, watch out for, with her next step, Maisie falls into a pit trap. <sighs> well, I mean, uh-oh. Scene change. Darkness, Maisie lands with a thud. Around her, a scuttling. Maisie ignites her glow stick and light spills on her environment. A darkened cavern. She is surrounded by plupples. They don't look like Gars. They look dumb as hell. Oh, whoa there, folks. Hang on now. I I'm a friend of Gars. Can any of you... Look, I'm, I'm just trying to... The plupples all coo. Plop, plop, plop. Holy shit, you created Ewoks. Huh? No. You created your own version of Ewoks. These are different. You created one of the shittiest parts of the original no, trilogy. No. Oh my god. Look, I just I, realized that right now. What the? No wonder why I hate this even look, more than usual. I, oh. I can't. I, I need to get out of here and find my ship. Maisie picks up the nearest plupple. Please tell me there's a way out of here. There's a way out of here. The plupple explodes. The plupple's all cool. Suddenly, from the deep, a bellowing. Oh, they're gonna eat her. What is that? Is that Dr. Goondis? We still can't see the figure, but we hear it from the deep. Don't worry, I am Dr. Goondis. <laughs> it's you. No, it's not. Yeah. No, it's not. It doesn't sound anything like me. What are you talking about? Don't worry, I am Dr. Goondis. <laughs> yeah, it's you. You're in the hot dogger now. Oh my god, you're a madman. Oh my god, he literally went through every one of the VO files that I've recorded for Unsolved. Cut up little pieces of it to, to form this? You are insane! You are a madman! I can't believe- you, you know how much- You have any idea how long that probably took to do? Don't worry, I am Dr. Goodness. Anyway, tune in next week for the season finale of The Hot Dogga starring Ryan Bergara. What the fuck? We got him! No, you didn't get me. This, this <laughs> proves how crazy- We got him! This just proves how crazy you are. Don't worry, I am Dr. Goodness. Oh my god, you... I love it. I've never been more scared of you than in this moment. <laughs> how did you not realize that? Because I didn't think you'd be insane enough to comb through hours and hours of VO. I did. Back over to Gramtown from Jinjang Mi. Uh, I used to be against the hot dogga, or however it's spelled, it spelled it right. But Ryan's A-plus voice acting has 100% made me an adoring fan. Hey Jin, shut up. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> because he knows this is a slight. I was not acting in that terrible hot dogga. Don't worry, I am Dr. Goose. <laughs> it's you. No, it's not. I was. He doesn't call it acting. He's very method. He's he No, no, no. He doesn't no. he doesn't act. He becomes Dr. Gundis. I was I was Shanghai. This is bullshit. Y More like Shanghai. The part of the show we call the Hot Dogga, a hot dog saga commissioned by and starring Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my butt. I'm not starring in it. Yeah, I didn't are. do any work on this. <clears throat> The plepples carry Maisie through a labyrinthine cavern, at last arriving at an expansive underground rotunda. Splintered beams of light from the world above spill onto a pulpit nestled in stalagmites. An elderly plepple, Joblet, plepples out to address the crowd. Mm, plop, plop. The plepples plop. Hmm, very good. I see we have an interloper in our midst. My name is Maisie, and I need to leave. Oh, it speaks. Well, Maisie, I'm not here to dictate the course of your plight. 
Us plopples aren't fit for decision making. Yes, sir, we tend to leave matters of importance up to our wise master. With that in mind, my fellow plopples, please plop your plops together for the venerable Dr. Goodness. Hell, oh, I love you. I love all my plopples. That was sloppy. Wow. <laughs> Oh, venerable Dr. Gundus, might you care to introduce yourself to the interloper we've all been hearing about? I am a man named Dr. Gundus. I am the glimmering beacon, and I'm both the mayor and the sheriff. Right. Approach me I, now, and you won't get hurt. I think I could uh, rest easy now, knowing that this is the kind of quality you're going to stand by when it comes to stitching my voice together, because now this is just embarrassing for you. I demand to know why I'm being held against my will. You got made in the shade now. You're charged with various crimes, including allegedly harassing my dearest. Plubbles. Ex <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Don't worry, you will soon go to jail. Venerable Dr. Gundus, what means of trial shall we grant to this criminal? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. He's not done speaking. What the? Uh... I should probably figure that out. I'll tell you what. Bizarre and violent trial with a giant club. Mmm, so it is decided. The corn shall prove her innocence in combat with the giant beast plepple. This is ludicrous. My home planet is being devoured by a sinister boogeyman. I don't have time for this. <laughs> what are you, you going to do? You know? However, don't give us any problems and I'll lay the trial during this time due to the fact that I want to get perfectly sane. Ha ha. Mm, yes, yes, we all know, Venerable Dr. Gundis. You're getting more and more sane by the day. The Venerable Dr. Gundis has spoken. Plopples, take the corn to her holding cell where she will be held until the doctor feels sane enough to judge her physical testimony. The Plopples swarm Maisie and carry her off. A metal grate slams shut and Maisie finds herself alone in a darkened cell. To her right, a Plopple guard snores as he listens to the radio. Maisie listens in. Well, you're listening to Earth Radio, and if you're just tuning in, things are pretty bad. A giant evil guy with a gauntlet is currently eating the world. He ate Europe for lunch, burped so loud he sunk Iceland, and now he looks to be starting on North America for dinner. Everyone's dying and the world is basically over. Maisie listens in horror, trapped with no way to go back in time, no way to help. Suddenly, she flickers a bit, and for the first time, her holographic luminance begins to fade. The DJ continues. And since it looks like we've only got time for one more song, let's throw it over to this beloved ballad from the Risky Fixins. Sometimes your life don't go exactly how you planned. A volcano eats your wife, and a witch kills all your friends. What else can you do but hop aboard a spaceship with a french fries and a can of soup? You've gotta believe in yourself even if you're just a hologram Even if nobody gives a damn Even if nobody gives a damn Clip will gonna stop you cause you got a plan Travel back in time and murder pan Travel back in time and fucking murder pan Sometimes you get marooned Didn't plan on bluffles for your honeymoon And sometimes you get locked up Sitting in a cell while bluffles bluff 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 But somewhere deep inside You know your tasty little pears are gonna find a way to save your high Three, four, four. You got a love inside your heart. It's burning like a frying pan. So you keep existing if you can. You keep existing. Cause it's the dog. A juicy little tail about just doing the best you can. And it's got a hundred billion fans. Critically, 
radio cuts out. Thank God. The fact that I doubted myself for even a split second is some military grade bullshit. I'm gonna get off this stupid pluple planet yet. Yeah, I just need some help. What? Who, who is that? Wait, how long is this shit? I think, the... I think the question you meant to ask is, which is that? From the shadows of Maisie's cell, a figure appears. It is glowing and small, about 40% bigger than Jiminy Cricket. Oh, you could say that. It's me, Pam, and I'm pissed. Will Maisie triumph in gladiatorial combat? Did Gene and Mike Soup survive the crash landing? Will Dr. Goondis regain his sanity? Why is Pam Little? Find out next season on the Grammy Award winning Hot Daga, commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara. No. You. Wow. <clears throat> You've, uh, you really have out crazy to yourself this time. I, the amount of work that you put into this is alarming. Uh, it's, why is uh, Pam Little? Why is Pam Little? Oh, why is Pam Little? I don't give a shit. Weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by and starring Ryan Steven Vergara, written by Dickens, I mean me, and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you yeah, can kiss my buns. Previously, en route to procure a Bernoulli converter and travel back in time to save their friends, the crew of the starship Minestrone crash landed on Tomat Zero, planet of the gentle Pluple. Thrown far from the crash, Maisie was apprehended by the Pluples, and after pleading with Joblet, the elder Pluple, and the venerable Dr. Gundis, she was tossed into a subterranean prison where she awaits trial by combat. Meanwhile, the starship Menestroni sits silently in the wilds of Tomat Zero, looking a bit worse for wear, but still in one piece. From the bush, a Pluple. Plop, wham, big one for us. And once more, from the bush, a Pluple. Mmm, yes, wow, 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 yes, yes, good, big one for us. Big one, hello. As the Pluples climb about the starship, the Minestroni's computer system lumbers to life. Greetings, I am the starship Minestroni. Ah, mm, no, 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 big one talks. I'm kinda messed up, but I await your orders, Captain. Ah, big one. Wait, who the hell are you? Where's Captain Mike Soup? I am Mike Soup. Hoo hoo, I am Mike Soup. Both pluples explode. What the fuck was that? Whoa, clean up on aisle, weird alien planet. Holy shit, that's funny, Gene. Is that from something? It's terrible. From the inside of the ship, a beautiful french fries and a very reliable can of soup emerge. It's Gene and Mike. Captain, good to see you're alive. And Gene too. Seriously, was that clean up on aisle weird alien planet bit from something? Mm, nope, I just said it. Well, in any case, like any soup worth its salt, we've got to assess our circumstances here. Minestrone, my wonderful starship who I actually love like a wife. Systems check. I love you too, Captain. Systems are fine despite those chili pirates roughing us up. I gotta take a nap or something though. Sleep, my darling spaceship. Baller, powering down. Gene. Yes, Captain. Any sign of Maisie in the immediate vicinity? Mm, no corn here. She's tough as turkey jerky, though, and doesn't have any internal organs, so she likely survived the descent. Excellent analysis. And why is that winged, sexy blue peach about to attack us? From the sky, a screech. A horrifying winged pluffle bears its teeth, its talons poised to attack. Oh, I can't die. I'm beloved. Suddenly, a hooded figure pounces from the brush and gestures to the sky beast. Uh, bah! Shana, choco too. The hooded figure <laughs> holds out an offering, and the winged creature, appeased, swoops down to grab it and flies off. <laughs> Almost got yourself into some hot water there, guys. Wow. Who are you, hooded sphere? Jesus oh. Christ, is this a fucking Chris Walking character? Oh, uh, hey there. My name's Garce. Uh, I'm a pluple. Oh, I'm Gene, and that's Mike. We've got a whole story. Do you have control of the sky beasts, Garce? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I just paid him to leave. Long story, but I won a contest, and now I'm on the money. So I get as much of it as I want. Here, have some pluple bucks. Whoa, thanks. Well, question, what the hell's going on? Oh, That's okay, yeah. He oh, hey, so I, I heard you talking about Maisie. Wait, you know Maisie? Oh, for sure. Yeah, last I saw her, she fell down a pit, and, you know, that stinks. But, hey, I got a hunch I know where she is. Happy to take you guys there. Soup? Best shot we've got, I suppose. Lead the way, Pluple, but if you do anything dumb, I will kill you with my hat. 
Will Jean and Mike find Maisie? Will Maisie face trial by combat under the orders of Dr. Gundis? Will the crew of the Starship Minestroni procure the Bernoulli converter they need to travel back in time and save their friends? Why is Pam little? Find out this season on the Hot Dogga Escape from the Planet of the Plupples. You know, <clears throat> it's, it's really hard for me to describe just how sad I am. We call the Hot Dog a I Hot was... Dog Saga, commissioned by and starring Ryan Steven Bergara, sure written by me and adored nice by every single viewer. Room. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my buns. In the subterranean I'm caverns of the alien room. planet Tomat Zero, a holographic court named Maisie sits confined in a pluple prison cell. To her side, the tiny ghost of a hot dog witch named Pam. Okay, look, before you get into whatever thing you're all about now, I have to tell you, I'm not a big fan. That's fair. You conjured me from nothing. That's true. As part of some pawn in your, I don't know, plot? Or just your stupid disaster of a life? Uh-huh. And yet, you bestowed a life of memories into my holographic brain. Didn't need to do that, by the way. That's cruel. You understand that? I, I know. And you even let me know love. True love. Completely unnecessary. It was a bad move. Only to drop my wife's ass into an actual volcano. Hell yeah. Nope, you better shut up there, witch. I'm sorry. And for what? Some petty bullshit that I'm not even a part of. I don't know you, hot dog, and I didn't ask to exist. In fact, I was very content not being. But now, thanks to you, a-hole, I do exist. I feel, I suffer, and I get pissed about stuff like, oh, being stuck in a prison on a planet full of very dumb blue things and their drooling Humpty Dumpty ass king. Or my crewmates, the soup, and my spectacular Grammy-winning brother-in-law probably being dead as hell in the jungle somewhere. And while we're on the subject, it's worth noting that I'd probably happily die myself, except, oops, I'm in love with a dead, wonderful French fries, and I'm gonna do everything I can to travel back in time to save her ass by, I guess, killing you. Why are you little? Well, plop, plop, from the corridor, the call of Joblet the Elder, pup, elder Pluple echoes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, that smells like magic. Look, I'm sorry about doing you dirty. I'm a nasty old hot dog witch and you don't trust me. I get it. Plus, I'm little now and that's probably very confusing. Yeah, why are you little? There's no time. Here comes Joblet. Hoonie to la ra la roo. Shitter, get off the pot, hot dog witch. I'm about to get carried off and eaten by a big ass plupple. What the hell is a plupple? It's like a peach, but dumb as hell. Oh, isn't it very nice to enter a room? Oh, well, great. You're officially worthless to me, witch. That's not fair, but I am going to disappear right now. Pam, Pam, Kazam! Pam disappears with a poof, just as Joblet the Elder Pluple enters. Good for nothing, witch. Hmm? Uh, I said, uh, your eyebrows are very thick. Oh, thank you. Yes, I love them. Anyway, the venerable Dr. Gundis is feeling much saner now, and he requests your audience at, in his throne room. Perhaps a few parting words before the trial by combat. Fine. Also, bit of an update for you. Your crewmates survived the crash. Oh, great. But then they were attacked by a pack of feral plupples in the jungle and perished. What? No, Mike. Jean. They couldn't have. I don't believe you. Well, always trust a plupple. Always trust a plupple. Anyway, off we go to see the venerable Dr. Gundis. Plop, plop, hula ra! What does the venerable Dr. Gundis have in store for our holographic hero? How will Maisie press on in the wake of the death of her crewmates? Why is Pam Little? Find out next time on the Hot Dogga. And just fade to a screen for a moment for a brief uh, contemplation of the off-screen deaths of Captain Mike Soup and Gene, the greatest character ever written now laid to rest on the planet of the Plopples. Oh, he's dead now? Yeah. Well, I actually am glad I have this shirt, Simone, so thank you for that, because it did give me strength through that. Gene. Sweet Gene. Who gives a shit? Dog Saga commissioned by, and starring, Ryan Steven Bergara as the venerable Dr. Gundis, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. A white void. Gross. Some time ago, a hot dog witch awakens. Her name is Pam. From the void, a voice. Bam, we didn't expect to see you here so soon. From the blinding light, a figure appears, an elderly crab, luminous, with like one of those cool hats that you can win at Six Flags. Oh, oh no, no, no. I, what kind of hat are you talking about? You know, like a, like a fucking cool wizard hat or something. 
You know the kind of hat. No, I don't. Who are you? Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, Bam. The question is, who am I? Y yes. I am he who you will never know. Father of Gina and Murray. Father of many things, in fact. Protector of the light, etc. Wh where are we? Well, I haven't quite put that together yet. My guess is we've got some things to discuss, you and me. I, I don't have time for this. I've got... You've got what? Things to do? Matter of fact, I do, you appetizer. Well, before you run off to whatever you so urgently... Uh, to whatever so urgently demands your attention, why don't you catch me up on where you are in the grand scheme of things? Ugh, fine. I murdered a bunch of assorted foodstuffs to appease the Dark Master because I'm a baller-ass witch who does stuff like that. Then I informed him of the prophecy fulfillment so he could summon his gauntlet of ultimate power. Or Gup. Gup, Gup, Gup. Yeah, the Gup. And then what? And then he... He pointed the Gup at me and... And I was here. Oh, okay. We're both dead then. This is uh, for sure a place where we're both dead. What? Shut up. Nobody's got the condiments to kill a witch like me. Oh no, f we're for sure dead. I've been in here for years and I had no idea, but you telling me that story made me realize that my last memory was putting a goldfish in my mouth to make my children laugh. Then I choked to death. Then the Dark Master betrayed me? Oh, you're running with that guy? He sucks. Play shitty games, win shitty prizes, Pam. I killed my own sister and her husband and sort of their son in a roundabout way. All for nothing. Yeah, that, that's messed up. You know, I was so consumed with hate and anger that I lost sight of who I was, where I came from, the things I loved. Uh, yeah, okay. Are you just like checked out of this conversation now? Yeah. What? L look, lady, I'm not some sage gatekeeper here to impart advice. I'm just a guy in a void. If you're so torn up about what you did to your fellow hot dogs, just get back in the game as a ghost. Oh, is that an option? Oh, for sure. But be warned, once you die as a ghost, you're done for good. You get one last stab at it, then it's lights out. It's sort of like reheati reheating leftover fish. Uh, tight. So how do I, uh, crabra cadabra? The spirit gate appears. That's unforgivable. Just, That's unforgivable. just, uh, <laughs> it's unforgivable. just, uh, before you enter When you wrote that down, did you have any kind of like, I don't know if I should go with that. What? Crap, did well, That's you, a callback, Ryan. Is it? Oh, God. Yeah. Like season one. Well, uh, maybe I pushed it to the recesses of the mind. The, the diehards will get it. The, yeah, the dog heads. Yeah. Just uh, before you enter the spirit gate, make sure you announce your intent and proclaim your spirit form. Uh, all right. Pam approaches the spirit door. I enter this door with the intent to right my wrongs, to aid those who I have harmed, and to defeat the evils I sought to unleash. Uh, to unleash. unleash. I don't know why I said that wrong. <laughs> the world's had its fair share of the Dark Master. Maybe it's time for a little Pam. Pam enters the door. Fade to white. That was a flashback to when Pam died, remember? Uh, now she's a ghost. I... It's all making sense. No, it's not. No, it's not. I think so. It, it never made sense. If you track it, it does make sense. If you sense. track it, you... I'm going to put this in a book someday, and I'm going to sell it, and it's going to be on the New York Times bestsellers list. What do you think about that? I think you'll buy it. Yes, I will. And that's it. Happy customer, folks. Five-star review. <laughs> I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog. Why does this Hot voice? Dog Saga commissioned by and starring Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. Zap! Or the tiny ever. ghost of a hot dog witch apparates in the middle of the jungle forests of the alien planet Toma. Is this, a long, is this a long one? Yes. Her name is Pam, and for the first time in her afterlife, she's doing the best she can. Gene! Mike Soup! It's me, Pam! We don't know each other super well beyond me dropping all your friends in a volcano. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe that worked. Anyway, I got murked and it chilled me out. Just visited Maisie in a subterranean prison cell and it seems like she could use your help. So I Pam Pam Kazammed out of there, which is my catchphrase now that I'm fun. Anyway, I'm here to help now, so come on out. Silence. Tell you what, I hate this planet. 
As Pam continues through the jungle, her eyes behold an eerie sight. The lifeless bodies of Jean, the Nobel Peace, Nobel Peace Prize winning French fries, and Captain Mike Soup, a guy who was really good soup. Oh, what the heck? I, I know I spent a great deal of my life trying to make you guys dead. And full disclosure, seeing you this way, there's a small part of my funky no good heart that's like, hell yeah. But the rest of me is different now. The rest of me weeps to know that I'll never hear another chart-topping hit from Jean, the French fries who sang songs so good that the US government laser engraved some of their lyrics onto the face of the moon. And Mike Soup, I know you pretended you weren't the infam infamous Soup Baron, but we're all pretty sure you were. Without you, the Chili Wars might still be raging. Oh, wow, <laughs> a little talking hot dog lady. From the, bl from the brush, a plopple. Oh, freeze, Dingleberry! Get your hands where I can see them or I'll do some messed up ghost, ghost witch stuff to you that would make puke puke. Oh, hey, no, no, no big deal. Hey, you want some money? It's got my face on it. <laughs> Here, here's a million plopple bucks. I don't want your money, you ho-humming beanbag. I want to know who ordered you to kill these travelers since you're obviously too inept to make any decisions for yourself. Huh? Oh, no, they're just napping is all. Promise, <laughs> you can trust me, I'm a plopple. Oh, all right. That actually makes sense to me because the one thing I've always said is you can definitely trust someone who repeatedly insists that you can trust them, you idiot. I don't care if you're a pluple. I don't care if you're Alfred Molina. You think I murdered an entire menu of beloved wedding guests by being honest? I'm the queen of deception and straight up dirty tricks. Game recognized game, however inferior. Hope you don't have much on your to-do list, donkey nut, because you're about to get possessed by a hot dog witch. Huh. Oh wow, what the heck are you talking about? Pam hovers in the air, briefly, then shoots toward the unsuspecting Pluple. Pam, Pam, Kazam! Garth stands motionless. He blinks. You shouldn't have done that, hot dog. From deep inside Garth, Pam's voice echoes, faint. What, what the hell? Where, where am I? You should have done your homework, hot dog. Only thing deep inside me to possess is a pit. Oh, this is messed up. How was I supposed to know Plupples have pits? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Enjoy your stay, Pam. Whoa! What's all the commotion? Nearby, Jean and Mike wake from their nap. I've just had a tremendously confusing dream about that old hot dog witch, Pam. Oh, that lady bummed me out. Oh, <laughs> hey guys, we, get a, we better get a move on if we want to reach your friend before sundown. I, I let you sleep an extra ten minutes because you looked so at peace. Aw, oh, Goss, you're a peach. Oh, you said it, Mike. And that's it for, I didn't write the whole, like, well, fine, wait, hey, uh, will they ever find out next week on the hot no, dog? No, no, Escape from the planet you, of the you, you don't need to wrap it up. That was good. Did you, did you, did that one all, was a smooth, did that go down smooth for you? No. It's getting good. No. no. It was like I swallowed the outside of a pineapple. Just rocked my fucking throat the entire time. It was gross. Jesus Christ. And tell your stupid tale. Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a Hot Dog Saga, commissioned by and starring Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. In the subterranean Pluppel cave state of the planet Tomat Zero, Joblet, the elder Pluppel, lounges in his sta stalactite penthouse, readying himself for the spectacle of Maisie's trial by combat. Oh, Joblet, what have you gotten yourself into this time, hmm? It's well, hot in here. anyway, back it's to status quo hot. soon. Enough racket, really. Yes, sir, a little peace and quiet, all under the, <laughs> the guiding hand of the venerable Dr. Gundis. Oh, boy. And then I can really focus on my brows. Mm, my luscious, it's strong, empty, fuck. good brows. Empty. A plupple guard enters. Plop! Ah, plop, plop. Very good. Send them in. Garth enters along with Mike Soup and Jean. Oh, uh, hey man, brows are looking great. Wow. Hmm, Garth, my boy, I see you've brought some pals. Swanky stalactite, poople. Uh, hello, boys. I've heard many great things about you. I hope Tomat Zero's been t treating you well. My name's uh, Joblet. Uh, ooh, drinks? Oh boy, we could use them. Wait, Jean. I'm not in the habit of taking drinks from blue strangers. Got a hold of her sound. Thank God. I've never been more happy to hear a plane than I am right now. Include this in the episode. I would like to break the rhythm of his stupid Just story. A second. Please include this entire plane interruption. We can wait. 
What if one of these, uh, I had like a mental breakdown and I just started like taking off my clothes or something? That's fine. You do whatever you want. I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm in the zone here. Um, oh boy, we could use them. That was abrupt. Wait, Gene. I'm not in the habit of taking drinks from blue strangers. No, Michael, be reasonable. Already. I have no nefarious intentions. Plopple's honor. Hmm. Very well. We could use a drink. Joblet hands the boys some drinks. He raises a glass. Well, here's to meeting new bros in space. Hup. Bit presumptuous, but I'll drink to that. Hup. They all drink. Hup. Hey, man, no offense to a plopple, but who are you? No. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm sort of the right-hand man to the big egg. You mean Dr. Gundis? Oh, you've heard of the man? Oh, they go way back. They're thick as milkshakes. In the chili war together, right? Well, I don't want to talk about the war, but yeah, we kicked ass. Anyway, we'd like to collect our friend Maisie and talk with Gundis ASAP about a part for my beautiful st starship Minestrone. She's ill, the poor thing. Well, any friend of Gundis is a friend of mine. You wouldn't happen to be looking for his Bernoulli converter, would you? Because I happen to have that, right here, all yours. Joblet tosses the converter to Mike Soup. Oh, oh, that was easy. Well, let's grab Maisie and get out of here. Oh, I, I just have one favor to ask for in return. Small thing, really. Name it. <laughs> Garce is gonna need you to accompany him on a short trip. Mm, that's not really convenient. Is, uh, is Maisie around? We, we've really got a, um... Oh, Maisie's in safe hands, trust me. In fact, she's gearing up for trial by combat this very moment. Law's the law, boys. No, Maisie, uh, say, say, what's in this, this plupple grog? It's, uh, what did you, you shitty plupple? I'm gonna kill you with my hat. But I, I'm beloved. Oh, you were beloved, Gene, by the people of Earth. And I regret to inform you that they're all dead now. Thanks, in large part, to you, actually. Yeah. You're gonna die for this, you plepple f- Ugh. The boys pass out. Well, that took long enough. Gars, the Persica's all fueled up in the launch bay. Coordinates should be uploaded. Don't forget the converter. He wants that too. Whoa, you, uh, you, you- <laughs> I started doing Gene there. <laughs> you you right. got it. Uh, haul him away, boys. Oh, hey, I missed you. You missed a spot, Papa. Joblet observes a small How long the, is this one? It's standard. It's, it's not plate. standard. Yeah, this has this to be longer fine. than no, normal. No, no, no. This has to Joblet be. observes a small patch on his forehead. It is not blue. Oh, seems I have. Gars exit, exits with the boys. Suddenly, a communication. <laughs> Joblet. Oh, hey, yes, yes, master. Is the package secured? Oh, yes, master. The soup and french fries are en route. And the converter. Uh, that as well. All of them tied up with a little bow on top. Excellent. By the time they arrive, I should be done di digesting Earth. Ooh, so we're square then. I will extend the dark cloud over Gundas' mind for the time being, but know that I may call upon your services in the future. Oh, thank you, Master. Well, if that's all settled, I'm off to watch a giant pluffle murder a holocorn. I don't care. The transmission cuts out. Will Maisie survive a battle with a giant plupple? Where are Mike and Jean going? Is Smeech still a part of this thing? Tune in next week for the return of the venerable Dr. Gundis in an all-new installment of the Hot Dogga Escape from the Planet of the Plupples. That was standard length. I had fun. Yeah, you did. You did. You're still here, too, so. Hashtag Bugara. Hashtag fuck the hot dogga. Oh man, that, now that's a hashtag I could get behind. Let's get fuck the hot dog on, maybe some horns celebrating. Horn. Post horn. Uh, uh, yep, okay. Great, our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by and starring Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters in the subterranean pluple cave state of the planet Tomat Zero. Maisie, the holographic corn, stands in the center of an expansive coliseum. In the stands, the plupples have gathered in droves though they're not really super aware of what's going on, which is that Maisie is about to prove her innocence in trial by combat against a giant plupple. Joblet the Elder Plupple addresses the crowd from his pulpit in the stands. Oh, plup, plup, my fellow plupples. It's almost Friday, the day for kissing. Everybody's what? plupping for the weekend, am I right? The plupples plup with excitement. 
But before we finish off yet another wonderful week of mining for that special mineral that makes my eyebrows look as good as they do, we have some business to attend to. The pluples pluck with excitement. Now, I'm sure you've all noticed a lot of commotion around here lately, but I can assure you things will get back to status plup ASAP. As you no doubt recall, we've been terrorized by the hologram corn interloper who stands before us. Uh, Maisie, can you say hi to them? Hello, Plupples. The Plupples Plup. Now, the venerable Dr. Gundas has graciously offered our dear friend here the chance to prove her innocence via trial by combat. But he had to heal up. Get more sane. You all know how Dr. Gundas gets. The Plupples begin to chant for Dr. Gundas. Hey, browse, wrap it up. Uh, well, I suppose it's time to bring out our dear leader to see if he's sane and ready. Plupples, plop your plups together for the venerable Dr. Ernesto Gordon Gundas. The chant grows as a giant pulpit raises in the stands, a gruesome, drooling egg. It is Dr. Gundas. He does not look well. All right, I'm back. Oh, oh, oh. Gundas! Er, uh, look, Maisie, some decorum. No, Gundas, if you value your life, you might consider staying out of mine. Really, is there any way we can just put this all behind us? Maybe you just let me and my friends, let me find my friends and get out of here. Are you fucking kidding me? You shouldn't have asked that question. I... I'm, you are you are insane. You I mean, I, I figured you, you, it was you, worth a shot. Uh, I'll still do your stupid combat thing. Oh, thank God. Whew, I was about to flip my shit. <laughs> Even though, full disclosure, no offense, you seem nuts. Every pup pluple on the planet oh my gasps. God. Oh, Maisie! What? The guy can barely string a sentence together. I may be just a dumb Dr. Gundis, but my mind is so clever, some describe me as a god. Oh, venerable doctor, the lady thinks you're touched in the mind. Can you please put her in her place? Okay. Hmm. Uh, here he goes. Oh, no. Dr. Gundis, 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 Dr. Gundis. My name is Dr. Gundis, and I'm here to say you will soon straight up die today. All my little bubbles know I'm perfectly sane, so now it's time to play my funny little game. My giant fucking bubbles are gonna kill you dead, but here's a little something from the top of my head. Dr. Gundis, Dr. Gundis, Dr. Gundis, Dr. Gundis. All their levels in the house say, Also, I swear to God, if you kill my giant pluple, I'm going to skin you alive. <laughs> what are you, you going to do? You know? Good luck. Mm-hmm. Well, he seems sane enough. Let the combat begin. Release Mufus. The cranking of the heavy iron gate echoes in the arena as a gargantuan feral pluple lumbers into view. It is blue like you've never seen blue. And it dwarves Maisie. While Dr. Gundis stares blankly, the pluples flop and Joblet barks at the giant pluple from the crowd. Faster, Mufus! The giant pluple lumbers ever closer and roars in response. Faster, Mufus! Maisie scrambles backwards. Whoa, whoa now, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. Joblet continues to hiss. Now, Mufus, now! Now, Mufus. As the giant pluple bears down on Maisie, she closes her eyes for a brief moment. They snap open. I'm so sorry, Mufus. I'm so sorry, Mufus. I am not a giant pluple. I am not a giant pluple. Mufus stops from deep in his belly, a rumbling. Joblet stands up in the crowd, horrified. The giant pluple, now in agony, bellows one final time. Thank you, Maisie. Mother of God. Mufus explodes. It is deafening. Tune in next week for the season finale, finale of the Hot Gaga, Escape from the Planet of the Plupples. Thank God. Isn't that good? No. Have you seen my little hot dog stories? I think I've seen like one yes. or two. Yes. There's a hot dog and he has a wife? Correct. And a car? Oh, you're on season one. I want to see. There's multiple Ooh. seasons oh. of the hot dog you story? Would, you would be surprised how deep the lore is at this point. There's lore? Oh, yeah. Right now they're on an alien planet populated by sexy blue peaches called Plupples. And a holographic corn named Maisie is about to fight a giant 
Pleppel to the death so that they can procure a ship that will travel back in time to save all their friends from being thrown into a volcano by a hot dog witch. Swimwear! Now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Daga. A hot dog saga commissioned by and starring Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters in the subterranean plate of Pleppel Cave State of the planet Tomat Zero. Maisie awakens to a scene of chaos and devastation in the wake of the giant Pluppel explosion. Innocent Pluppels wildly scramble to flee the crumbling Colosseum. Dazed, Maisie can barely get to her feet. With the sound of an impact nearby, a blast of debris launches a maimed Joblet to the ground in front of the holographic corn. Joblet looks different. Even his eyebrows are not as good. You're a, you're a peach. <coughs> Oh, congrats. Where'd you go to college? Detective school? No. Oh. Look, Peach, this whole cave is about to collapse on our asses. All you have to do is tell me where Garce is headed with my friends and I'll drag you out of here so you can live out the rest of your miserable life. <laughs> it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. They're headed to the Dark Master. Let me, let me die here with my brows looking so great. <laughs> Joblet passes out. Ugh. Your brows look like shit, but I'm gonna save your life for my benefit. Maisie picks up a beaten old communicator from the rubble at her feet. Maisie to Minestrone. Oh hey, this is the Minestrone. I was napping. Uh, mind giving me a lift out of the Pluppel Cave State? Few more minutes and I'm cornmeal. Baller, hang tight. Suddenly. Oh wait, let me turn the volume up on this. Looks I'm like sorry, Ryan. Come prepared. Wow. Wait. Suddenly. <laughs> Dr. Gundis, now fully insane, staggers toward Maisie. Gundis, I have no beef with you. You're clearly dealing with some stuff. Just let me leave this planet. Don't worry, Dr. Gundis will murder you. I, I feel like you're not being receptive to literally any of my shit. Time for death. <laughs> Man, it's just so seamless, I can't even tell. It's, it's like I recorded it myself. The deranged egg bears down on Maisie with a violent madness in his bloodshot eyes, when suddenly the cave ceiling collapses, showering the area with rubble and giant stalactites. A ray of light bursts through the crumbling cave as the starship Minestrone appears. Below, the dust settles to reveal Maisie and Joblet alive and well, but the venerable Dr. Gundis is cracked in two by a dislodged stalactite. Oh god, I gotta get off this planet. Minestrone, activate the tractor beam. Powering up, please hold. All right, yeah, no rush. Maisie stands awkwardly for a few seconds. Suddenly, the halved shells of the late, venerable Dr. Gundis quiver. And then... Oh well, oh, well. coming out of my shell. So swell, yes, sir. Today, today I'm, here to stay. I'm here to stay. I'm sad that giant fluffle passed away. You know, in all our lives, we go through darkness. For example, I was hypnotized for many, many years, and I'm frankly not too happy about it. But soon my troubles passed me by, by, by. And I'm a bird and a feathery, and this bird is feeling ready to take it to the sky. sky. I wonder why those pluffles made a king of such a simple guy. You'd think they'd want a ruler, maybe saner and a little cooler than a cracked egg with two vacant eyes. Okay. Go, go, go. Hey, uh, I hate to interrupt your song. Oh no, go for it. It's the instrumental break. Well, the planet is falling apart and I've got to leave. Hey, you need a little company? I mean, I guess I could use someone to keep the treacherous peach in line when he wakes up. Well, then I'm your chicken. Life in a shell can be hell if you're under a spell. But if you do your best diet test, your taste friends will take care of the rest. I once killed the Pope with my friend Mike Soup. Mike Soup. But he was bad, so it was rad, now it's firmly in the past, now I'm ready to fly the coop. Oh shoot. oh shoot, it's been a hoot, wish I could hang, but oh gosh dang, I got a scoot. I think I'll grab a ride with a holographic corn right by my side. Oh, by the way, I'm Dr. Goonness, so pleased to meet ya. Let's go and find your friend. Gundis has left the planet of the Pluppels. Come on, Smeech. 
Well, we'll see you next season. What the hell did I just listen to? Weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome to you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a Hot Dog Saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara. You just give me a breath. Just give me a breath. 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 If you don't like it, you can kiss my apple. Just let me just let me just get like a just like a breath. Just I need to prepare myself for the dumb shit I'm about to hear. Okay. Previously on the Hot Daga, a lot happened. Watch the episodes. <clears throat> a beautiful tropical island, dappled sun falls onto the face of a peach named Joblet, relaxing on the sandy shore. His brows are something else, baby. <clears throat> a more ideal situation I can scarcely conjure. The life of a peach, who can beat it? He takes a sip from his pina colada. From the tropical brush, a holler. Uh, uh, hey, Pops. Mm, Garce, my boy. Garce, a young peach, runs up to his father. Behind him, a lady peach. Garce, why did I tell you about troubling your father during his rest times? No, oh, Murga, that's all right. The boy is very good. He'll have my eyebrows one day. Oh, you really think so, Pops? Mm, I'm like 40% sure. I guess it's hard to say. Jeans are funny like that. I guess your mother doesn't have very good brows, so who knows, quite honestly. <laughs> well, you can't blame me for that. I'm dead. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, don't you recall, Joblet? I was blown to smithereens on that transport ship during the Chili Wars. You buried my pit. <laughs> yeah, she sure is dead. Wake up, Dad. What? No, no, that can't be. Wake up, honey. N no, I won't believe it. My brows are still immaculate, but you can't, you can't be. I said wake up, you bum. Joblet waits with a start on the brig of the starship Minestrone, surrounded by a charismatic, tough-as-nails holographic corn, a cocky flying ace chicken, and Smeech. Um, ah! Oh, oh, boo-hoo-hoo! Don't hurt me, please! I never meant to lead you astray. Can it, produce? We're not here to hurt you. No, see, that's what separates us from you. According to the corn, anyway. Sure, if I had it my way, I'd peck at you all the way down to your pit for what you did to me, but it ain't about what I want. What do you, just check to see how much more is left. Oh, quite a bit. Um, Whee! That's Smeech. Uh, oh, Smeech, good thing, you, I, I wasn't sure. Do you remember him? No, I don't care. Oh, he's really good, he's a fan favorite. The doctor's right, we're not here to hurt you, and I think that's evident considering we just let you take a three hour nap. Oh, that was three hours? I told you to wake me up after 10 minutes. No wonder I'm groggy. I'm gonna pluck out all my feathers and shove them down your throat, I swear to God. No, oh, please, no, oh God, oh no, my brows, whoa. Doctor, some restraint. Listen, Peach, the doc's a little peeved because you ruined a large portion of his life. That's only fair. But seeing as I set him free, he's promised to leave you untouched so long as you help us find our friends. Oh, you mean Jean and Mike Soup? The starship Minestrone shudders as her system blinks violently. Don't you even utter his name or I'll suck your ass out my airlock, you fuzzy fraudster. Oh no, what was that? Well, okay, that was the, the ship. She, she was very close with Mike Soup. Listen, everyone on this ship, except for maybe Smeech, Whee! we all want you dead, including me. But I'm, gonna let that, I'm not gonna let that happen so long as you take us to our pals. So start talking. Oh, okay, okay. They're en route to the Onion Station Space Buffet. The luxury space station vacation destination? I almost bought a timeshare there before the war. Nice property, good square footage. Why didn't you pull the trigger? Cold feet? I don't know. I was an egg. Look, all I know is the Dark Master instructed us to bring them there. That's all I know. I swear. I swear on my brows. Well, your brows are, your, well, your brows are turds now, FYI, but I'll take your word for it. Minestrone, set a course for the Onion Station. Baller. The Minestrone powers up and zap! What awaits our intrepid heroes at the Onion Station? How are Gene and Mike doing? And Lil Pam? What's the Dark Master's deal anyway? All will be revealed this season on the Hot Dogga Showdown at the Space Buffet, only on Bun. Bun is the name of the network now, so it really ties in quite nicely to what the what this is all about. No, no, no. You have any questions? The Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Stephen Vergara, written by great. me and adored by every single and viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. Uh, oh, wakey, wakey, you're in spacey. 
Jean. Oh my God. <laughs> Unforgivable story. Jean, who is French fries and Mike Soup, awaken on the bridge of the Persica to the sight of Garce standing over them. Hey, what? where are we? Oh, wait, yes, I remember now. We were drugged. I feel weak. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry about that. You, you, you're you just going to have to do whatever I say. Pops in the pocket of the big old mean guy. Not much we can do about it. Uh, I mean, I know I'm just french fries, but I think you could maybe choose not to be complicit in the destruction of the universe. He's got a point, you patsy scuzzball. Oh, whoa, harsh vibes, man. Look, uh, who can say how the Dark Master's mind works? All we know is he's currently devouring the universe and has asked that you be delivered to the Space Buffet Resort here at the Onion Station. <laughs> I'm sure everything will be fine. <laughs> I'm sure I'll kill you with my hat as soon as I regain my soup strength. <laughs> you sure you will. This. There's no way you could possibly enjoy this, TJ, right? Thanks, Tej. He said that he, there is no genuine emotion in his face he when he said it. that. There is no genuine emotion. No. I love it. Oh, yeah, that really you sold it. that one. That's good. That's <laughs> good. Everyone's going to believe that. I love it. I'm sure, I'm sure I'll kill you with oh, my yeah. hat as soon as I regain my soup strength. Oh, oh haha, sure you will, Dingbat. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, that was weird. Uh, anyway, look alive, folks, we're here. Cut to the Onion Station arrival dock. It is expansive, teeming with activity, basically like the hangar of the Death Star, except more vacation-y, and probably not as cool looking because we don't have the means to animate something so huge. As new arrivals and resort employees zip past, the Persica's boarding ramp lowers with a pneumatic roar. The party exits with Garce leading the pack, and they're met by a very ornate man who is buns, lettuce, tomatoes, meat, pickles, and various condiments, all stacked. Greetings, my esteemed guests. It is I, Weldon Bergerow, most exhilarated by your arrival. Oh, uh, hey, what's the, look, look we don't really need a, all the fanfare here. Ha ha ha, nonsense, lad. I received word from a mysterious anonymous, borderline ominous source that we, that this ship was carrying some very juicy VIPs, or JVIPs as we call them. And as the owner and proprietor of this luxury resort destination, it is my duty, honor, and absolute pleasure to personally welcome you to the Onion Station Space Buffet, where dreams come true and hot tubs too. Christ, take a breath. There's a vein coming out of your throat right there. That was... Oh, well, great. <laughs> It's a, good, turning red. it's a good Let vibe my, you've got, really great, but we'll just head to our rooms oh, if that's all right. <laughs> the blue one is a rip-roaring stitch-up. You other lads have anything to say, or is this a tandem ventriloquist act? Uh, they're just here to enjoy their vacation is all. Isn't that right? Uh, kind of log. Yep, just, just here for a little R&R. &R. Exactly right. We've, we've had a stressful week. Oh, well then, haven't you come to exactly the right place? Here we encourage you to check your worries at the door. Sliders, initiate the orientation fields. Weldon's assistants, who are tiny burgers, enter and flip some knobs on the nearby panel as large machines swing over the heads of the arriving party. They whir to life as they begin to emit a soothing pink light. Uh, what's happening? Yeah, this isn't cool, my dude. Ethically, I think. Oh, your apprehension and confusion is both typical and, might I say, very responsible. But this is simply a courtesy, nay, luxury, that we provide all incoming guests. And I assure you, this is a perfectly natural process that has been medically tested on chicken nuggets. Look, you pile, none of us agreed to this, and you don't stop. Th if you don't stop this instant, I'm gonna hug you. Yeah, you little, you lovely, kind, good man. Ah, see, now you see how my technology works. It takes all your worries, all that negative energy, that darkness, and it makes it little, little worries now. And aren't we all feeling better, happier, ready to relax in this luxury resort destination? How could this possibly still be going? The pink light like intensifies as the orientation process completes, leaving Garst, Jean, and Mike transformed, tranquil, ready to relax. The beams fade and the machines retract. Whoa, I feel like I just napped for a thousand years. I, I feel like a happy sunshine person who always wins. I feel as critically acclaimed as I always do, which is the most. Capital, this is what we aim for. Now, who's ready for a tour of the resort? There's much to see, my JVIPs. You're letting this happen. Why don't we start at the universe-renowned <laughs> Zero-G Lazy this. River? Oh my god, hell yes. I call dibs on the chubbiest inner tube. This is gonna be the best vacation ever. 
the group rushes off to explore the resort. Meanwhile, in the Onion Station Command Center, a slider flags down her supervisor. This is what it looks like to have to listen uh, to this sir? from my perspective. What you got for me, Charlotte? Show animations. Just Scanners there. are picking up some kind of colossal anomaly that appears to be consuming all matter in its path. Oh Based on its current track and speed, it's set to collide with our station in a matter of days. Hmm. A little worried about that? Not too worried. Yeah, I'm not too worried. Well, let's keep an eye on it. Like I said, I'm not too worried. Will the gang enjoy the lazy river? What nefarious Thank plans the does the Dark Lord. Master have in store? Will Maisie and Gundis make it to the Onion Station in time to sort this all out? And is Lil Pam okay? Find out next week on the Hot Dogga Showdown at the Space Buffet! Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog of the Hot Dog Saga, commissioned by Ryan Stephen Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters deep in the bowels of the Onion Station Space Buffet Luxury Resort. Two sliders commiserate in the canteen. Oh, hey, Christopher. Long time no see. Oh, whoa, Alice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they had me up on the Lido deck. Lifeguard duty. <laughs> Not what I signed up for, but somebody's got to keep an eye on those pickles. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Uh, anyway, I, uh, <laughs> I put in for a transfer off station, but I just ended up here in the process in processing an admissions. I'm I chuckled at that. You know, like the song says, sometimes your life don't go exactly how you planned. Uh, true. Well, glad to have you aboard. I um, I really miss seeing you around. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I missed you too. The air feels heavy. Oh, oh, actually, um, are you about to eat or? Oh no, I just finished. Why? Oh, well, I could use a hand interrogating some new arrivals. Little suspicious. We found them trying to sneak in through the cargo delivery bay. Said they got turned around and lost their reservation passes in a wormhole. I'm not too worried about it. I just have to cover our bases. Oh, yeah, of course. The two sliders walk next door to the temporary leisure break, where a family is waiting. From the looks of it, a husband, a wife, and their two children. Oh, hey there, folks. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, heck, no worries. I feel so darn stupid showing up at the wrong entrance and all. That's what I get for letting my husband do the driving. Oh, here we go again. So I fell asleep at the wheel and almost veered into a wormhole. Big whoop. Well, we've, we've all been there. It's a long trip after all. I'm sure you're all exhausted. I'm Alice, by the way. This is Christopher. Oh, we've just got a few quick questions before we get you all checked in, Mrs. Um, uh, Teresa Matterhorn. I'm a high-powered attorney, and I've been looking forward to this vacation all year. This is my husband, Cecil Ramon. Uh, my friends call me the Juggernaut, and our two sons, Delmar. I'm just a sweet boy, and that's it. And Smeech. Wee! Well, a lovely family. Christopher's pulling up your reservation right now. I'm so sorry for the inconvenience. In fact, to make up for all the trouble, we can offer you some vouchers for... Hey, uh, Alice? Christopher furrows his brow at his handheld tablet, then looks nervously at the Matterhorns. Hmm. Do you mind, um... Can I talk to you outside real quick? The sliders leave the holding cell. Oh, God! They're gonna kill us! They know! They know! Shut up, Joblet! This was our only way into this place! Just play it cool, turdball! They're buying it! You don't think there's warrants out for our arrest? They're probably putting the pieces together right now! We gotta fess up! You squeal in your cobbler, you hear me? I'll kill you before they get a chance to slap the cuffs on us! Oh, try me, Gundis! You know we used to be friends! You were my only friend! You locked me in a mind prison, eh, hole? Shh, sh shut up! Here they come! Uh, sorry about that, folks. Just, um, uh, putting out fires all day. You know how it goes, as an attorney. Uh, sure, as an attorney. Yeah. How much longer we got? I get it. I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom so bad. What do you got here? Oh, okay. Almost well, like anyway, here's those vouchers for free toaster tans. You weren't in our system, but I'm not too worried about points. it. Oh, uh, thanks. Well, if you head out those doors and take the elevator on the left up to the 174th floor, you should find your room. Uh, and don't forget to stop by orientation to shrink those worries. Oh, and by the way, you guys look just like those people on the news. You gotta, you gotta find a newspaper and take a photo with it or something. It's incredible. Uh, we'll do that. Thanks for, uh, all your hospitality. Come on, Smeech! The family exits. Well, that was uneventful. <laughs> well, you should know by now, nothing exciting ever happens around here. Any big, uh, weekend plans? Oh, yeah, um, Seymour's taking me to the pasta parade. Ugh, that guy? Uh, he's a nice guy. Will Maisie and co. track down Gene, Mike, and Garth? What sinister plans does the Dark Master have in store? Where's Lil' Pam? All this and more next time on the Hot Daga, only on Bun. Well, I gotta go to the bathroom. That was, uh... Stop, you can't, no, nope, can't hear you. Your mic just fucking... His mic's dead? <laughs> You've got nothing to say. <laughs> no. <laughs>
What? You loved the episode? Said, it was the, the best bathroom. episode I said, I yet? I, I can't even I hear it. What? The oh, Ryan, right. yeah, that's too sweet of you. Uh, Ryan loved it. Go he bathroom. loved it. Let's cut to that clip of him laughing at it again. <laughs> See you next week, folks. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Stephen Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. At the Onion Station Space Buffet Resort and Spa, Brave Mike Soup, Incredible Gene, who is absolutely French fries, and Garth, the duplicitous peach, all bask in the calming pink glow of the Zero G Lazy River. Hey, you guys ever think about what happens after we die? <laughs> nah. I do. I think it's random, like a slot machine. You might become a ghost. Whoa, scary! I might turn into yogurt. Garth might go straight into the devil's red hell and suffer for all eternity while maggots crawl through his stinking body. Who can say? <laughs> okay, well, I hope I become an angel. Yeah, <laughs> like with big golden wings. They're even more beautiful than my Pop Pop's eyebrows. Uh, you know, Garth, maybe it's all this relaxing, but I honestly can't even remember why I was angry at you in the first place. He and his father drugged and kidnapped us and lured us here for reasons unknown, only to, er, for reasons known only to the Dark Master. <laughs> you know what, guys? I, I don't even care. We're in a kick-ass lazy river and I couldn't give two pickles. Frankly, I don't care either. This place has such a calming influence on my stern temperament. I feel as giddy as a chowder. Oh, make way for the juggernaut! Dr. Gundis, a large, very relaxed chicken, floats past the gang. Whoa, howdy, fella! Well, aren't you just the king of the river? Ha <laughs> ha, ain't that the truth? Something about this place just makes a person feel like royalty. Say, feather man, you look familiar to me. Huh? Hey, now that you mention it, so do you. And the little blue guy! Those dog tags you got. You ever see service? Well, feels like a lifetime ago, but yeah, I think so. Whoa, thanks for your service! Did you ever assassinate the Pope? You know what? I did, I think. Bernie? Soup! Whoa, whoa, the venerable Dr. Gundis. <laughs> Sorry about my dad being such a dick all the time and for following his orders without question. <laughs> Oops. You know what? I had a lot of rage in me, but now we're here bathed in this wonderful warm light. And all that darkness, well, it just feels little. And the cocktails here are so cheap. Well, I'll be can't. I truly can't believe it. Ernie Gundis in the flesh. This is my good friend, Gene, a talented French fries who's from the future. I secretly find his positive attitude very charming. Whoa, nice to meet you. You're a big part of our whole mission. Or were, I think. Now we're just so chilled out here, it's like, hey, let's swim, you know? Read my mind, Gene. No, oh, choo-choo, here comes the joblet trolley, and this little chugster is drunk as a truffle pig. Joblet and Smeech float into the river. Whoa, it's the gang. Hey, it's you. I hate you, and I'm glad you look all fucked up. But I got nothing but chill vibes for you right now. Namaste, or whatever. Who are you, and what have you done with that old crankpot, Mike Soup? Oh, LMAO, Gene. Yeah, funny as hell. Love this guy. I love you, Gene. Oh, this ends now. Finally, floating into the party. It's Maisie. She does not look happy. Oh, hey, everybody. Man, so good to see you all. Same! Same. Anyway, I had something to tell you, but I... Huh. You know, after that orientation we just went through, I just... Whew, I just want to chill till I'm dead. Ooh, ahoy! A jovial hamburger floats into the party. My precious, wonderful JVIPs! The Space Buffet Pasta Parade is sh is st sharding. <laughs> is starting shortly. It's how we chill everybody out before the weekend's around here. We've reserved a place for you all on our most esteemed float. Bring your new pals here, too! Ha ha! Anyway, I'll beef seeing you soon! Oh, I love parades! Oh my god, me too. Say, just a quick thought, everybody. Uh, I never got to download- I never totally got the download on why the Dark Master wanted you here. Should we be concerned about that? Uh, I'm a little worried, but only a little. Same. Well, then everything's fine! The best vacation ever! Will Maisie and company enjoy the rest of their vacation? Is Weldon chill? What's going on with the bad guy? All this and more next time on the Hot Daga Showdown at the Space Buffet, only on Bun. It would be a fruitless effort to kill us. You're not, you're not, you're not preventing anything. There's no follow-up. There's no follow-up. Unless they kill us before the post-mortem. Then you're just gonna be drawing more attention to it yourself. Made it, you'll be preventing the hot dog at its next installment, which, oh no. It made it into the main show, no, we did it. Cut that yes. out, cut nope. that out, cut Keep that it out. In. No, Keep cut it that in. out, cut that out.
I'm keep serious. It in. Cut that out. That keep cannot, it in. I'm serious. There is a sanctuary nope. that is the main episode. It's infected it, and, and that's you fine. Cannot, you cannot that's corrupt fine. it. Okay, you're gonna okay. cut that. 6 a.m. on a Saturday to be able to see the ep and make the post-mortem deadline. Anyway, the thing that shook me the most in this episode was the thought of having the hot dogga in the main ep. Like, why? I could barely stand it in the post-mortem. Well, actually, I stopped watching post-mortem when the hot dogga starts. And I can't even, literally can't even, if it gets into the main episode. Anyway, hashtag Bukara forever, hashtag fuck the hot dogga, hashtag love you Shane, but fuck the hot dogga, Hashtag, I hope I make the postmortem. You made it. You did it. And uh, look, no one is sadder than me that the hot dog uh, infected the uh, the sanctity of the main episode. You know what's interesting though is that you oh, yeah, have what's... final say on the final cuts of the episode. Mm, I actually said to cut that out in the notes, and they didn't. And they didn't. I think the team turned on me. And yet you didn't. What you are you gonna, what protest am I, anymore? What am I gonna hack into the mainframe there and like cut it out myself? You know, it seems like maybe if you didn't want that in the episode, it wouldn't be in the episode. Part of the creative process is uh, teamwork. Yeah. And you know, uh, being a team player. Yeah. Yeah, so for this case. Yeah, no, I know what you're saying. Yeah, thank you, yeah. What is this voice you're doing right now? No, I know what you're saying. <laughs> the Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a Hot Dog Saga, commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. The mood is electric. As excited crowds line the walkways of the Onion Station Promenade, the lights dim as the speakers blare. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together for the most dazzling show in all the galaxy. How dare you start that with the <clears throat> Disneyland cadence? The Onion Station Space Buffet Pasta Parade. Music fills the air as the first. I can't As the believe first it. pasta float makes its way down the promenade. I can't believe Atop the this. float is Weldon Bergerow, dressed to the nines. Ha ha! Hello! Welcome to the weekend, my lovely guests. Stop by the hot tubs. They're free! The next float has a bunch of dancing jalapeno poppers on it. They are the universe's best dance crew. Everyone seems to enjoy them. As they pass, another announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare. Stop for it! Stop it, stop Ladies doing this. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare for ultimate relaxation as our JVIPs blast you with those sweet, sweet serenity beams from atop the feel-good float. The feel-good float makes its way down the street. Atop it is our, is our gang of lethargic heroes. Yo, what up, party people? I'm French fries. Life is finite. Enjoy your fleeting existence. Also, why does this parade smell like chili? Ooh, cheer if you like my eyebrows. The crowd does not cheer. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I love them, Papa. D did you hear me cheering? <laughs> hey, who wants a blast of serenity beams, huh? Dr. Gundis blasts the crowd with the pink haze. They feel great. Oh, hey, let me get some of that, Doc. Gundis blasts Maisie with the pink light. Man, this is the best weekend of my life. Suddenly, a rumbling. The whole station shudders. Scattered debris falls from the ceilings. No, oh, what was that? Another rumble. Screams begin to fill the air. From the head of the parade, guests start to flee. Expressions of terror on their faces. The panic starts to spread as the crowd erupts into a full-blown riot. Weldon Bergerow limps into view. He doesn't look great. Run! Run, my JVIPs! What is it, Berger? Something large, extra large, that came from outer space and took a bite out of the station. The audience, the jalapeno poppers, he, he's still chewing. Oh God, the chewing. But another bite is, it's sure to follow. We're all going to die. Fly, you foods. Weldon coughs and then just straight up dies right there on the promenade. Holy shit, is that burger dead? Uh-oh, Papa, do you think this is the work of the Dark Master? It can only must be. Oh, we're served up on a platter, sitting beloved ducks, a meal for a cosmic monster. Well, what do we do? We've got to stop him. Oh, now wait a minute. You know what'll help us think? Some more of that serenity light. Here, let me crank it up 10%. Give us a little extra juice to combat these harsh vibes. Gundis blasts everyone with the serenity light. They take a deep breath. The chaos around them continues, but they have found bliss. Ooh, that's top shelf, baby. You know, I've been thinking about cutting my hair shorter. Ooh, you should, you could for sure pull that off, Maisie. <laughs> wow, I was thinking of getting eyebrow implant. <laughs> what? Garsh, are you okay? Ch just chill out, all right? Gundis, can you blast the boy again? Uh, I don't know, he looks a little ripe. Papa, 
Yes, my boy. <laughs> Whoa, okay. I think I'm gonna die. Garst pops like a balloon, and as the smoke clears in his spot, a small hot dog witch freed from her prison inside the peach. What up, turnbags? Sorry that took so long. I was in a pit trap. My boy! My boy! You'll pay for what you've done! Pam looks annoyed. Pam, Pam, kazap! Joblet also explodes. Pam, what are you doing? What? Those were the bad guys. Why were you, like, chilling with them? Wait, Pam's good now? Why is she little? Semantics. See, hey. see reason, TJ. Hey, this is hey. ridiculous. This is hey. not out of hand. What's even <laughs> happening? Who's the giant cocktail wiener? <laughs> What's happening is the Dark Master is devouring the space station one bite at a time, and if we don't do something ASAP, you're all as dead as those dumbass peaches. So stop frying your brains on that pink junk and get your heads in the game, dingbats! She's right. It's now or never. Time to kill the Dark Master once and for all. But he's enormous! How on earth can simple foodstuffs like us ever stop him? I don't know, but I'd say we've got about 30 seconds to figure it out. Man, you guys really pooped the bed on this one. Ugh, shut up, Pam. The hour of judgment has arrived. Will our heroes prevail in the face of ultimate evil? Find out next time on the Hot Dog Showdown at the Space Buffet. Only on Bun. How has it come to this? The Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. Okay. Oh, the parade is certainly ruined in the wake of the Dark Master's giant bite. Panic takes hold as the Onion Station Space Buffet Resort and Spa begins to crumble. The gang scrambles for a plan of action. All right, folks, what's our plan? Look, Maisie, if I'd known we were going to be squaring off against a colossus, I'd probably have stayed in my egg on that stupid planet full of the dumb guys. Oh, cool, yeah, well, this is ideal for me. This is exactly how I wanted to bring back my dead wife. Okay, your tone is appropriate, and I apologize. Come on, Michael Soup, think, think, Soup. Hey, wait a minute, everybody. We've all got this pasta here. Why don't we strangle him with it? Say, that's not a bad idea. And Pam, can you do some hot dog magic to make the pasta extra, um... Extra what? Extra strangly? I can make it sparkle. Wait, hang on. This big guy, this bitey man, he's no good? Yeah, he's worse than I used to be. Again, I'm not overly familiar with you. Uh, well, she stunk. Uh, she's the reason all our lives are so shitty. True that. Well, Maisie, didn't she also will you into existence, though? And the love of your life? And my acclaimed rock and roll band? Yeah, so? Well, I wasn't really making a point, just illustrating that she's fairly complex. Hey, fun convo, guys, but I believe Ernie was on his way to a game plan. Oh, yeah, if this guy's nothing but bad news, why don't we crank this serenity ray up to 100 and turn all the dark energy little? That's how it works, right? Oh my god. Yes, I mean, I think, I don't know, it seems doable. Well, it's gonna take a minute to charge up, but I think we've got, from the head of parade, from the head of the parade, a blast. Smeech is gone. Smeech! Crank it, Doc. The chicken cranks the serenity ray up to 100. As it begins to slowly power up, a towering hooded figure stalks into view. It is the scariest villain in the history of fiction, including Heath Ledger's Joker. Let me handle this, guys. Just a blast, just blast him as soon as you can. Pam steps forward. So good to finally see you all. And how very tickled I am to see you here, Pamela. Yeah, well, I started meditating on my decisions and felt kind of bad about playing a part in the total destruction of planet Earth. Too little, too late, I'm afraid. I'm just doing the best I can. You, you know what? It's worth a shot. Pam, Pam, Kazam! Pam's witch blast freezes in midair. Huh? So that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what's this? It actually hurt my heart. A gift? <laughs> I'm afraid I couldn't possibly accept this. Pam, what's he doing? Who's deserving of such a beautiful, shimmering thing? Uh, Ernie, how's that special project coming along? Uh, 97%, just a few more seconds. Say, you there. Uh, who, me? I think I've heard your songs on the radio. Jean smiles and is struck by the witch blast. Everyone screams, but it'll be in slow motion while emotional music plays. No! Jean! Ha 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 Oh god, we're at 100%! Do it! Gundis blasts the concentrated serenity ray at the hulking figure. The Dark Master screams as his figure is reduced and shrouded in the oversized cloak. I'm so sorry! I'm, I, I didn't think he could- Shut up, Pam! Jean! Jean, are you okay? I'm, <coughs> I'm not great! 
look, this place is coming down. We gotta grab the converter off the Persica and head, hop up, uh, and hop on board the Minestrone ASAP. Uh, from the cloak, the figure screams, Mike Soup. <laughs> Mike and Gundas freeze. Oh God, I know that voice anywhere. It's him. What? His Adam's apple was stuck in his throat. <laughs> you guys better go, or we're all gonna die. This is your only chance. Mike and I will stay behind. W wait, why? Seems we have unfinished business with the space poop. Chilly the night. There's only one episode left of this season, folks, and it's gonna be a real barn burner. So stick around next week for the season finale of the Hot Dog Showdown at the Space Buffet, only on BUN! Our weekly uh, Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the portion of the show we call the Hot Dog. What was that? What's that? Uh... Oh man, now I really don't give a shit. I didn't give a shit before. What is this? But That's now... a hot dog uh... saga. Saga. A hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Steven Vergara, uh, written by me and adored by every single viewer. You know, if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. Uh, so. Mm, I think this ring's stuck in your finger. Oh, as the Onion station crumbles, Maisie, Pam, and beloved Jean race aboard the Starship Minestrone, having just uh, retrieved the Bernoulli converter off to a great start. They pop it into the deck. Minestrone. Oh, Maisie, sup? How's that converter feel? Enough to get us in the, uh, c enough to get us to the Graxilon wormhole and kick this tin can back in time? Mm, yeah, this thing's delicious, for sure. Then fire it up, ship! The Minestrone rockets out of the Onion dock. Orbiting Onion Station, initiating hyperdrive for jump to Graxilon Quadrant. I will miss you, brave Michael Soup, the biggest baller of them all. Wait, no, we, we, we gotta wait for Mike and Ernie. Oh, Maisie, it's, we're out of time. Whatever their business with the Chili Pope, it's gonna end with all of them getting vaporized. And if we don't get our buns out of this sector ASAP, we're dead too. I'd actually be double dead, which is the worst kind of dead. <coughs> Speaking of dead, I know I've been chilling all cool, but uh, I'm getting a little soggy over here. Uh, hang in there, Gene. Minestrone, is there a med kit on board? No, Captain Soup, the Captain Soup used the last one when he got stung by bees and forgot to buy a new one. No, oh, Maisie, it's fine. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a nap for a while. Wait, hang on, Gene. Uh, Pam, can't you like do a, a a magic thing? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm my witch stuff usually only hurts people, but just try. Uh, okay. Pam, Pam, Kazam. Ah! Uh, Pam, Pam, Kazoo. Ooh! Pam, Pam, Control Z. Ah! Okay, that's uh, that's obviously not working. I told you. I'm sorry, Gene. She made me. It's fine. You're a witch. I get it. And a damn good one. The blast w the first blast was enough anyway. It's a foregone conclusion. It's too late now. Gene, just hang in there. Uh, uh, you're gonna be fine. Oh, you know what? I don't think so. Goodbye, Maisie. Blech. That's, uh, Gene's dead now. Good. Um... And so, Sweet Jean, the most compelling character in the history of fiction, was laid to rest. At his side, the bravest corn he'd ever known, and a hot dog which he wished he'd gotten the chance to know better. Sometimes your life don't go exactly how you plan. What can one do in the face of such monumental loss but breathe a weary sigh? For the world is a little quieter now. Sometimes you death. Wait, one last thing. It's looking like I've had enough. I tried the best I can, but I don't got the stuff. I ain't got shot by the chili pope. It's easy living as a French fry. Critically acclaimed, but now it's time to die. Frankly, life's been pretty dope. It's been a long, hard road for a fringe, fries and corn to walk down. Who could have ever known the road would lead to you and me and Super and Dunas taking on the galaxy? I know that life is crazy, but believe me, Maisie, you. Me. I mean, I'm 
Just a funny french fries There's really no need to cry Even though I'm so revered Hyperdrive initiation, 50% That space station looks like it's gonna blow up my dudes Was living lonely in a future state but traveled back in time and met my foodie mates Most of them were witch holograms Almost all of them were holograms The story gets a little dense from there But if you got a brain it's pretty crystal clear Here, check out this diagram See a wedding fell into a witch volcano Then we scrammed and then we landed on the planet of the bubbles It's Pan. Now we're traveling to the past to save our friends and kiss our ass I know that things seem kind of shitty And that the odds aren't looking pretty But what's the point of quitting now? And I won't be here to see it but you bet your ass that I believe that you'll still save the day somehow. Macy's gonna save the day. The end is coming, gonna punch my mortal ticket. If I had a fucking bucket, then I got a hunch I'd kick it. And I'm sorry for the cursing, but I'm feeling worse and worse. And I don't, I don't wanna die. This french fries gonna take his bow in this hot dog I'm dying now just so we're this clear is it, shit, this is it, I'm I'll see you die. later pals I'm out of here <laughs> it's been a treat I think I see smeech Hyperdrive active, initiating jump to Graxilon Quadrant. You proud of that? <laughs>